Hi, Chip. Welcome in. Did we get some yos? You're the first one here. Hello. That was my phone vibrating. <laughs> Why does it still say my bitrate is unstable? I'm gonna scream. In terror. Even though today's not a scary game. Don't worry. I mean, surely it's not a scary game. It's rated E for everyone. <laughs> Imagine. Face came on in one minute. Hashtag real, hashtag not clickbait. Okay. Face came on in three, two, one. It works. <laughs> hey, good morning, good afternoon. Hope everyone is doing well well today. Thank you for Chip for Thank you, Chip, for typing in the just learning soon screen. Welcome in everybody. It is eleven twenty eight Thursday. I'm live a little bit late. And you know what? I have an excuse. My sister would not stop yapping. Cause she's off today so she wanted to chit chat and i was like okay fine also a little anecdotal update if you watch the sub only stream from like two weeks ago i was talking about this comic who made fun of me for being disabled and wearing a mask anyway update 
he performed again last night because I went last night. I, I go on different nights every week. And he was there. I was like, and this guy's bit? Because, like, he hosted last time. So, like, every single comic change, he would do a little joke. And that's normal. But he had a five-minute set. And he literally just flirted with the woman in the audience. It was crazy. I guess that's his whole shtick. Like, roasting the audience and then just trying to riz. It was gross. Anyway, I didn't laugh at anything you said. <laughs> so that was last night. And then yesterday, um, I, had to, I went to the doctor's, right? And I had to do an EKG, I think it's called, where they put the little pads on you to monitor your heart rates. And I had to do the treadmill test. So I had the EKG hooked up to my chest. <laughs> I'm working on this bit. I'll tell the story again next week. But since you're early crew, you get to hear it early. <laughs> um, so I had the EKG up to my chest and stuff. And I'm on the treadmill. And I've never used a treadmill before. So I was talking to the nurse. I was like, hey, I've never used one of these. And she's like, oh, don't worry about it. <laughs> so like for the first half of it, I had to walk. And then... Because how they work is they have to get your heart rate to like 160 something and then they can monitor like how your heart reacts under stress. So I walked for the first two minutes and I jogged for two and I was like, I'm done. I'm done. Because it was either you jog for a total of 20 minutes or until failure. And I was like, dude, I ain't gonna run. I'm not supposed to run anyway. My doc is like, don't run. But I had to run for this test. There was no walking. There was no elliptical. So that wasn't... That was an L, but my leg hurt, <laughs> so after I got a bubble tea, and then I chilled at home, and then, <laughs> it's so bad, I played Supermarket Simulator for like, three hours straight yesterday, <laughs> and I was looking at my Steam stats, and I have 30 hours in the game. <laughs> Don't worry, I've been working on other stuff. I've been working on editing and stuff, but... 30 hours in the game in one week? Oh my god. It's crazy. Anyway, so that was yesterday. And today, plan is simple. We're gonna be playing a short little game. We're gonna be playing Enjoy the Diner. It is a point-and-click pixel adventure game on the Switch. It's also on PC. I bought it on sale. I looked at it this morning. It's selling for $10.99. It's about two to four-ish hours, depending if you want to get all the endings. So that's the plan for today. And visually, it looks cute. <laughs> uh, oops, wrong button. Let's boot it up. Real, hashtag real. <clears throat> Enjoy the diner. Well, that was the loading screen, okay. And we're in. Okay, start story, options, complete ending two to unlock, and license summary. This is an interesting way to do a HUD, or a menu. Okay, there's no vibration, that's good. change the music. The piano is nice, but let's go with the original. Start story. Enjoy the diner. Let's start a new save. Dot, dot, dot. My friend.
take the blue pill. It's like the Matrix. I've never seen the Matrix. Dude, what happened? Okay, I'll reset. I'll reset. I unplugged everything. Why can't anything go right for me? Okay, I'm gonna verify that the audio synced still. Still, okay, it's good. Let's try this again. <laughs> okay, start story. Dot, dot, dot. My friend. Take the blue pill. The moon. The moon is full. My werewolf? I almost said vampire. That's the wrong monster. Enjoy the diner. Well, I'm beat. The moon is really nice tonight. With the moon like this, I think I'll go to a diner. This late? Diners were like breakfast food, though. It's pretty cold out. Quiet, too. Moon Palace. I didn't know there was a place like this around here open this late. Table for one? Right this way, please. Are you ready to order? Hmm. I'll have some ice cream and a soda, please. All right. Ice cream and soda. Will that be all? Yes. Thank you. Oh, wait a second. The ice cream doesn't have shrimp in it, does it? <laughs> Dude, having allergies be like... Um, you're asking if the ice cream has shrimp in it. Just making sure. I've got a really bad allergy is all. It doesn't. Will that be all for you tonight? Yes. Thank you. All right, let's try to get some studying done. She hasn't come yet. Did she forget? Okay, the world doesn't revolve around you. I think you should only complain if service takes more than like 30 minutes. And the reason I say this is because I went to a local pizza chain a few weeks ago, and it took the server 30 minutes to come to our table. And then after that, 45 minutes almost for them to actually make the food. And we were like the only people who hadn't been served food in the restaurant. So it took over an hour for service. I think you should only start chirping and call the waiter when it's been 30 minutes. That's my take. Huh? Was my seat always like this? Actually, everything here feels off. What's going on? Yeah, the table looks longer. 
For now, I'll look for the waitress. Oh, the sounds are so nice. Let's look at the poster. A poster of wine on the beach that reads, A Taste of the Deep Sea. Cutlery. Spoons, forks, and chopsticks all in here. But what's the point if the food never comes? Real. Menu? I thought it was a menu, but it's just a blank board. Smooth, too. What is this? It's a table tent. Notebook. My notebook for studying. Record what has happened so far. Ah, uh, yes. All right. I think that's all I can click on. Let's get out of here. Moon Palace, a diner for the whole family. Your table. Learn about the secrets behind our logo on our official website. Oh, it's a map. Okay. What if I just leave? I'm going to walk out. <laughs> the king's table. Got a soda fountain, king's table, door, entrance, moon view table, and corner table. Let's go to the soda machine. Oh, nice. There's a soda fountain. Most of these I've never even heard of. Makes me a little uneasy. Glasses. Just normal glasses. There's a lot of them. Who's doing the restocking? Sugar and Adams. From left to right, there's sugar, creamer, and sweetener. Creamer is the only one empty. Yeah, creamer is the only good thing. Oh, I can select all the different soda pops. Penguin soda? What is this? It's super carbonated and almost has sort of a meaty flavor. Ew. This couldn't be what penguins really taste like, could it? Black booze. It's a little sweet. Pretty mellow and easy to drink. Doesn't really feel like there's alcohol in here. My throat is getting warmer. Wait. Do any of these have shrimp in it? Uh-oh. Maybe the penguin one? Primordial soup. It's complex. For just a moment there, I got a whiff of fish. And a little salty, too. But it's good. Goes down easy. Moon tears. Cold. Tastes sort of like pear. Strange. It disappeared from my mouth with a fizzing sensation before I could even swallow it. Apple juice. It's apple juice. Delicious. Silver water. It's water. I guess the color is just for show. What if it has lead in it? Let's be honest, every single pipe system has lead in it. It's unavoidable at this point. Glass syrup. Okay, I've eaten glass. It does not taste good. Soft, sweet, and sour. Sort of like thick lemon water. Glass syrup. I don't think that's the right name at all. Also, I need to clarify. Don't eat glass. It was an accident for me. It was in my smoothie. And I took the L. And I was fine, thankfully. But don't do it on purpose. Middle dispenser. It says out of order. I'd better not. Right dispenser. It just says liquid. Nothing happens when I push the button. That's ominous. Let's get out of here. Let's go to the king's table. You there, peasant. You must be a newcomer. Okay, I didn't think there'd be someone here. R. Spike. We can ask some questions. 
Let's ask, who are you? I am Railroad Spike, King of Fork and Spoon Kingdom. Pleased to make your acquaintance. This may be a diner, but do be aware that you are in the presence of a king. It would be wise to show some respect. What's with that look? I'm only kidding. <laughs> Where's the waitress? Sorry to say you won't find servants of any sort here. Be it cooks or waitresses, only guests like ourselves. In a place like this, even royalty such as myself must go and fetch their own water from the soda fountain. Where are we? It would seem to be Moon Palace. Quite a grand name, wouldn't you agree? However, the name isn't grand for no reason. Some peculiar powers are at play here. For instance, one could describe this world as ideal, free from aging, hunger, and even death. Everyone has come here from somewhere else, but as there's no way to leave, they all spend their time idly. So I can't leave? out. I should never come here. About our spike. You wish to know about me, do you? As I said, I'm the ruler of the small kingdom of Fork and Spoon. Well, it might be more precise to say I was the king. I've heard from the others that my kingdom is no more. It has been a considerable amount of time, after all. Well, that's all there is to know about me. I'm not used to talking about myself. In the past, simply holding the title of king meant there was no need to explain myself. That's not the case here. Here, a king holds no special privileges nor obligations. And you, will likely, and you likely wouldn't find my title convincing either. As I thought, it's no use. If only there were at least a history book or something. Historians are eloquent. They would probably speak of me better than I could myself. Man, he just was yapping. About the soda fountain. I'm not familiar there were such things as soda fountains before my arrival here, but I have grown rather fond of it. I have an inkling as to how the contraption works. But in truth, I am more comfortable serving myself than having someone else serve me. Everyone using the same contraption means I needn't worry about being Everyone using the same contraption means I needn't worry about being poisoned either. True, actually. Is there any creamer? You mean by the soda fountain? When I arrived here, there wasn't any left. It's peculiar that it doesn't seem to get refilled, unlike the others. Actually, them getting refilled at all is peculiar. Who's doing it anyway? I shall bestow upon the replenisher a reward should I find them. Final question. What's your favorite drink? Hmm. It is difficult to pick just one. Ah, yes. I rather enjoy the primordial soup, which each, with each sip is a new discovery. That complexity makes for valuable entertainment. Can I get you some soup? I can't click on anything else here. Let me get him some soup. Oh, I can't serve him soup. Okay, let's get out of here. I kind of want to wait to do the door and the exits. Let's try the moon view table. Well, well, another newcomer has joined us. Glass pan. Where are we? The eternal restaurant Moon Palace. There's no other way to explain it. Just me and you here forever. Can't be that bad, right? The moon is as full as it'll ever be. And there's even a soda fountain. So just sit back and enjoy the diner. Where's the waitress? No clue. All I know is that I've never seen one around before. Who knows? Maybe they're hiding under the table or something. Wait, but we saw a waiter earlier. 
And there's actually music at this table. Who are you? I'm Glasspan, a Moon Palace veteran. There's no way to keep track of time here, but I'm sure it's been thousands of years. Maybe more. For your sake, I'll let you know that you're never getting out of here. Let's enjoy our time as best as we can. <laughs> but I want to leave. About our spike. You want to know about the king? Well, I do have one strange story about him. He arrived here after me. I don't know the details, but he must be someone from the early modern era or something. If that is the case, then the timeline is all wonky. But that's all. I'll, but that's about all I can say about this place. About glass pen. Me? You want me to introduce myself? I could talk about before I came here. An absurdly long time ago, I worked as a designer for vacuum cleaners and the like. The most famous one I've worked on is probably the Whale's Breath series. That's a weird thing to call a vacuum. You're... You've probably never heard of it. It's for industrial use, after all. It had quite a reputation for being cute, powerful, and easy to use. What else? I guess that's all I have to say. About the soda fountain. Let me tell you. This soda fountain is real nice. They all taste a bit strange, but it's easy to get hooked on the stuff. It doesn't even matter how much you pour, it never runs dry. Good luck. Free refills until the end of time. <laughs> What's your favorite drink? Hmm. It's gotta be the black booze. I'm even drinking it now, see? I don't think it's strong enough to get drunk on, though. But just the thought of alcohol is enough to put me at ease. Second favorite is the penguin soda. It's quite the experience. But boy, was it ever tough to get accustomed to. Final question. Is there any creamer? There isn't any. There was plenty when I got here, but... The drinks at the soda fountain seem to get restocked from somewhere. The sweeteners, too. The creamer is the only one that has run out. I wonder if it's an equipment failure or something. I used the last one a few thousand years before you got here. Sorry. So mean. Poster. We also have cake. I wonder if that's true. Nearby glass. Hey, don't touch that. Just leave it as it is. I'm gonna touch it. <laughs> Fine. Glass. It's filled with a black liquid. That's the booze. The moon. The moon's bright. Okay, let's get out of here. She's kind of weird. The corner table. Oh, you're new too. Feel free to take seat. Shalonika. Where are we? Everyone said we're in a place called Moon Palace. It's written on the entrance door, too. To be honest, I don't know much more than that. I definitely wouldn't call this place normal, that's for sure. Where's the waitress? There are no employees here. It's probably not even a real restaurant. There's the soda fountain, but I couldn't find any sort of menu. Who are you? I'm Chulonica. Nice to meet you. I must admit, I'm not good at introductions. I've only just arrived here. But I suppose that makes us both newcomers. It would be nice if we could help each other out, share information and the sort. About our spike. The king, right? I actually know the king, or I know about him, would be more accurate. It's a strange story, but hear me out. The kingdom he claims to have ruled over, fork and spoon, isn't on the map anymore. Around 500 years ago, it was annexed into the territory of Guston. According to the records of the time, the king was never blessed with children. After succeeding to his throne, there was no remaining heir. The royal family tried to formulate a plan, but to no avail. 
The whole country was left in unease. And then... The king vanished. Oh, sorry. I thought you'd be a little more shocked. I've been going on for a while, haven't I? Sorry, I'll wrap it up. Where was I? So, anyway. With no monarchy to speak of, Fork and Spoon was forced to submit to Gustin. It's possible that Gustin remote It's possible that Gustin rewrote the records of their invasion to paint themselves in a better light. But at any rate, all records mention the king's disappearance. The body of our spike was also never found. If the R spike here is the real deal, then that would solve one of the great mysteries of history. The king was just at a diner. What is this place anyway? About Shalonika. Huh? Me? You want me to talk about myself? That's awkward. Let's see. I work at a university library. I enjoy history and pretty confident in my knowledge of it. What else? I also like birds. Such beautifully shaped creatures. Um... I also like turnips. <laughs> Satisfied? Not really. I want to know about you, not the food you like. About Glasspan. The one who's, well, always drinking. She comes off as a hedonist, but there's also something lonely about her. She said we've been stuck in Moon Pals forever. Is that really what's going to happen? Even if we were here for thousands or even millions of years, it still wouldn't equal eternity. Of course, she probably did that. Of course, she probably did like that from the start, but I don't think it's a waste trying to find a way out. Is there any cake? Or, wrong voice. You know what else is wrong? Watching and not following, because guys, we are 30 minutes in the stream, so if you're new here, click follow. You get cool emotes, and you get type in chat. Isn't that pretty cool? Is there any cake? Well, there isn't any, is there? You only find drinks here. Why are you asking all of a sudden? About the moon? Oh, the moon. It's always full, so that means... Is there a sun behind Moon Palace? Some sort of light source on the opposite side of building of the moon. If it's a star, I think it'd be much brighter. But if it's not a star, then is it man-made? Like an observation deck or something? We could speculate all we want, but we've got no way to verify anything. Alright. It might not mean anything, but it was also a full moon on the night I arrived here. How did you get here? Now that I think about it, I haven't said anything about that, have I? It was midnight. I was at home reading. Without thinking, I looked out the window and noticed there was a full moon out. And I thought, on a moonlit night like this, I should go to a diner. I'm not one to go out to eat very often. I looked up a place nearby that was still open and took a walk down there. It was called Moon Palace, just the same as this place. I ordered from the menu and waited. Before I knew it, I was here. Wait, are we being trafficked? You had a similar experience. I see. It's literally the exact same thing that happened to me. How to escape? Once again, I haven't a clue. We're trapped in this restaurant, but even if we were to escape, that wouldn't be the end of it, would it? We'd still be stuck out there in the darkness. Hmm. Yes. What we need is a complete solution that hits this whole thing at the root. Like, if this was a real... Like, if this was really a virtual reality, a code or something, that would shut the whole thing down. Or like creating a wormhole to warp us home. But easier said than done. Hmm. From here, you can see the moon in all its glory, but it doesn't have any markings or patterns on it. Is it even the moon? A 
about the soda fountain? You also saw the fo soda. You also saw the soda fountain, right? What's up with it anyway? I've never heard of any of those drinks. I mean, besides apple juice. I tried them all. They each seemed a tad odd. Well, they didn't seem to affect my body in any noticeable way, but it's like this is some kind of restaurant from a parallel universe. What's your favorite drink? You mean from the soda fountain? I like Moon Tears. It's quite smooth. Final question. Is there any creamer? At the soda fountain? There's no creamer left, even though you'll find sticks of sugar. If I had to guess, someone here must really love the stuff and hog it all. The person responsible would probably be embarrassed if they were found out. So let's not press anyone about it. You sound awfully suspicious. It's gotta be you, Chilona Chilonica. Okay, the only thing I can press here is Chilonica and the Moon. Let's check out the entrance. Door. The door is clear. Oh, it's glass. <laughs> <laughs> Won't open. I can't find a keyhole either. It's like it's not even supposed to open. Even if it did open, there's nothing but the moon out there. What is this place? The door. Oh, and the bottom says we're hiring. Join us for a fun and delicious work experience. The text on the bottom is different. It's dark. It feels like someone is on the other side of that door. It won't open. Is it locked from the inside? Um, is someone out there? This room is occupied. I'll be out as soon as I can. Please wait. Oh, could you be a newcomer? Um... Let's interrogate them. Where are we? It's Moon Palace. Oh, it's not the place's name you want to know, sorry. I'm not sure I can explain it. It's like a different dimension, or rather, it's not a normal place. Don't assume that the same logic from Earth will apply here. Where's the waitress? I- I'm not the waitress! I'm not sure where she is either. Who are you? I'm- I'm Janice. There are reasons why I can't leave this room. I'm sort of afraid of open spaces. Um, did you see the outside? There's nothing except the moon. It's more like emptiness than darkness. So, I'm staying in here. It's not because I'm guilty of something or anything. No, not at all. Hmm. Maybe she stole the creamer. About our spike? You mean the king? We haven't spoken much, but I think he's a nice person. Probably. Actually, I feel like I made others uncomfortable when they talked to me. But he has always listened patiently to what I have to say. I'm sorry if I make you uncomfortable. About Chenis. Me? There's not much to tell you. Oh. Before coming here, I was working as a living caretaker at an estate on the outskirts of town. The owner said that no matter how much they typed in security, a creature would break in and ravage the house if nobody was living there. I never thought to ask what creature it was, but surely it would sense signs of life. I used to spend my time in that estate reading books in front of the stove and gazing at plants. That was me. Man slacking on the job. About Chalonica. Oh, that man. Honestly, he's a little scary. I know I'm just being paranoid, but when I talk with him, it's like he's interrogating me like I did something wrong. It might just be the sort of bluntness intellectual people tend to have, but 
Maybe I did do something wrong? Hey, you stole the creamer. About Glasspan. Oh, Glasspan. She arrived here after I did. It seems that Lottery was a real source of emotional support for her. They must have been really close. Yeah, who's Lottery? I heard Lottery just vanished suddenly. A lot has happened since then. But Glasspan acts so carefree now. Hmm. Is there any cake? No. About the outside. Outside? There's nothing outside. There's no way to get out, but I think it's better that way. Just imagine falling into that void. Uh, just the thought is terrifying. About the moon. The moon? Jeez. It's really scary. Oh. I, I, I don't really want to talk about it anymore. How did you get here? How I got here? Just like everyone else. I went to a diner, waited for my order, and then wound up here. Ever since then, I've been in this room. How to escape? A way out of here? All our problems would be solved if that were possible. Okay, true. <laughs> About the soda fountain. The soda fountain? I'm sorry, I haven't used it much. What's your favorite drink? Huh? Um, well, maybe coffee or something like that? There was no coffee in the machine, though. Is there any creamer? There isn't any. Probably? Glassman used the last of it a long time ago. I think they're hoarding all the creamer. The painting. A painting of a crescent moon. I'm wondering what's up with the blank space. I guess that's just how it is. Okay, so I assume when you talk to everybody, you unlock different dialogue. And you just have to ask everybody everything. So, about the moon painting. The painting in the hall? I don't remember all too well, to be honest. The blank space is rather unsettling, huh? Okay, so I'm just gonna keep looping around. Oh, back to my table. This is getting boring. And there doesn't seem to be any way out. The others have been here much longer than me. I wonder if they're busy. Obtained, are you bored? Okay, let's make the rounds. Uh, I wish there was an indicator to see, like, what I've asked them. Shenna's? I don't know much about hers. She's always secluded herself. What I will say is that there's no death or conflict here. So I wonder what it is she could be so fearful of. She must have her reasons, so it's best not to pry too much. Jelonia, the young man with the long hair, yes? It seems he arrived here only just a bit before you. Unlike you, he knew how to behave when in the presence of a king. Perhaps you're just overly familiar. You're the only one who bombards others with questions without much consideration. At any rate, regarding Shilonia, it seemed like he already knew how I, who I was. He was surprised when I informed him of my name. He may be able to humor you should you wish to hear more about yours truly. About Glasspan. She's been here since my arrival. She is composed now, but back then she cried, screamed, and appeared extremely distressed. Apparently, she did not come here alone. She spent a lot of time here with a woman named Lottery. Glasspan experienced deep grief after Lottery's sudden disappearance. But gradually, her demeanor changed to what you see now. I suspect it's a defense mechanism. Is there any cake? No. You must have seen the poster. There is none. Are you the real deal? Hmm? 
Are you inquiring whether I'm the real R. Spike? Well, that certainly clears any doubt about your lack of refinement. I have no reason to make false claims in these circumstances. But I have no way to prove it. How are you to determine something that only I can know for certain? Well, I suppose I should divulge the truth, then. You were not aware that I am a woman, were you? I? Your reaction is to be expected. After all, you likely weren't able to After all, you likely weren't aware that I was believed to be a man in the first place. But now that the opportunity has presented itself, why don't I provide you with a special history lesson? The rules for accession to the throne of Fork and Spoon were simple. One must be a male of royal blood and a legitimate child. I suppose it's not much different from other kingdoms. It is not a common occurrence for there to be no successors. However, by the time of my birth, a deadly plague ravaged the land. Those in the royal family, too, perished one after another, including my mother, weakened from my birth as well as my father and remaining kin. In the end, all those in line for the throne died. I was the only one remaining with royal blood, for better or worse. However, women held no right to the throne. So a conclusion was quickly reached. Those who wished to maintain the monarchy ordered that I was to be male. And I was placed on center stage as the new ruler, a savior. In other words, I was a puppet. This was a closely guarded secret. I am certain there is no mention of it in any records. For that very reason, there's no way to prove myself, but... Do you believe me to be the real king now? Ooh. The king's really a woman. Right. That's what I said. Do you doubt me to that extent? About the outside. The only thing out there is the moon. It's as if this world only... It's as if... It's as if... It's as if... It's as if in this world only this building and the moon exist and are floating. But what use is there in pondering the outside when, he, when we cannot even leave this diner? Why can't we leave, though? About the moon. It's quite large, isn't it? I could be misremembering, but it does look different than the moon back home. The moon really is quite stunning. Doesn't the pattern look like a dancer? That's right. In your country, it's more common to say it looks like a crab, isn't it? At least that's what Glasspan told me. How did you get here? How did I get here, you ask? Hmm. There are some matters I'd rather keep to myself. But to put plain... But, to put things plainly, a certain someone set me free. This discussion is over. How to escape? I wouldn't know. And mulling over the topic wouldn't be a fruitful endeavor. I do think it would be easier to simply accept being here as fate. Perhaps you could think of possibly escaping one day as good luck. Not the expectation. I did the dialogue already. About the moon painting. You're talking about the crescent moon with the face, correct? I'm not much of an art connoisseur, but I'm strangely drawn to that painting. I always stare at, as, I always stare at it as if the moon is going to come to life. But of course, that has never happened. Are you bored? Well, I once struggled with boredom too. Will you be surprised at the ideas you'll get to starve it off? To stave? I've never heard the word stave. But you'd be surprised at the ideas you'll get to stave it off. I've been spending much of my time recently going for walks. I close my eyes, and in my mind, I walk along a narrow path leading to a forest. And with each step, I feel the earth beneath my feet. You may find it difficult at first, but once you get used to it, 
It will become so vivid you'll find it hard to distinguish it from reality. Once you've accomplished that, you're free. Free to roam the forest to your liking. So, why not give it a go? Well, it was simply a suggestion. You're not required to kill time alone or anything. Luckily, you have company. Amusing yourself with trifling conversation with the other Boon Palace residents is not bad either. Let's chit chat then. Why not? Well, now, what shall we discuss? How about my kingdom of Fork and Spoon? Well, Fork and Spoon sat in a valley surrounded by steep mountains to the north and south, sandwiched between the great powers of Guston to the west and Saint Sol. Sandwiched between the great powers of Guston to the west and Saint Sol. Salt. Salt. Saltmere. Sandwiched between the great powers Augustan to the west and St. Saltmia to the east. Relations between these two countries were strained. War could spring up at any minute. My small kingdom was positioned in a geographically significant site for these two countries which are focused on the inevitable conflict. As such, Fork and Spoon was made to tread as such, Fork and Spoon was made to tread on the most precarious of tight ropes. Though, admittedly, we profited from acting as an intermediary in trade between the two countries behind closed doors. After all, we were desperate to preserve ourselves. But one day, blinded by profit, we took things too far. You see, Gustin bribed us to send a merchant to Saltmia to secretly dispose of a package that was intended to be delivered. The content of the package was insignificant, yes. It was more than enough to be the trigger. They could rewrite the incident however they liked in the history books later. And so, Gustin waged a defensive war, claiming that Fork and Spoon and Saltmia conspired against them. Fork and Spoon became the battleground and was raged war. Fork and Spoon became the battleground and was ravaged by war. Shortly thereafter, I arrived here at Moon Palace. I do not know what happened after that. You know. It's almost as if there's a moral to this story. Hmm. I suppose this was not much in the way of chit-chat. I'm afraid I'm not well versed in idle conversation. Obtain noble chit-chat. <laughs> in my country, there is an heirloom passed down from king to king. A small metal box inside which only the king is to see. Naturally, I received said box once I took the throne. That night, when I was alone, I decided to look inside. It was empty. Confused, I quickly examined the breast of the box and found an inscription on the inside of the lid. It read, To the kings who hold my blood, the contents of this box must never be known to anyone. Pass it on to the next king, for the secret will protect our country. I thought about two cases as to why the box might be empty. The first of which was that the box had once held secrets or some treasure, but the contents were lost and the box was passed down without anyone knowing. The other was that the box had always been empty. The box's creator may have devised that knowledge of a secret known only to the king would protect the country. In other case, it was a failure, as fork and spoon has fallen. At the time, I still chose to protect the box of the belief that the second case was possible. Okay. Got a little bit more about him. Let's talk to Glasspan again. Oh, it's gonna be hard to keep track. About Chalonica. The guy with the bangs. He's a newbie like you. Yeah. He's a smart one. Always thinking everything over. I was surprised when he tested to see if he could die right off the bat. Stabbed himself right in the neck with his pen. You're free to try it for yourself to see what happens. I don't think that's such a great idea. I'll just ask him about it myself.
Ooh, are you lonely? Are you lonely? Huh. Well, what do you think? Of course I'm lonely. I think everyone here is, more or less. You sure like being blunt about everything. Catching me off guard like that. <laughs> um, who's Lattery? Chanice of the King probably mentioned her, huh? It's fine. It's not like it's a secret or anything. She was my friend. We came here together. I thought as long as I was with her, Eternity might not be so bad. Then one day, she just disappeared. It's not necessarily true to say that leaving Moon Palace is impossible. It's just not something that happens if you desire it. Because what she desired was eternity. Is there any cake? Oh, you're talking about the poster. I looked around but couldn't find any. I wonder what's that all about. The king is really a woman. Yeah, I know. I've heard it before. So we're basically going around everybody and gossiping. About the outside. There's nothing but the moon out there. But there was once a time when I was looking for a way out. Nothing worked. Doors wouldn't open, glass wouldn't break. I don't recommend you try it. Well, maybe it's still... Well, maybe to kill time. The moon's here. The moon here is always full and never moves. It really is beautiful, but it'd be nice to see it wax and wane from time to time. Without that, it's easy to get tired of it. How did you get here? Probably not too different from you. It was so long ago my memory is a bit fuzzy. In the middle of the night, I went to a diner called Moon Palace with a friend I lived with. What did I order again? Anyways. We were just chatting and waiting for our food to come. It was taking a while, so I got out to go make sure they got our order. That's when I noticed something was off about the place. So we explored around and met Chenis through the door. It seemed as though she understood our situation. She seemed uneasy. Like she thought she'd always be alone. She never thought others would show up. After that, well, a lot has happened since then. It's the same path you'll probably go down. So, I won't say much about it. It's best not to spoil anything, right? No, tell me! I need to know! How to escape? I don't know. But there was always a- But there was a way to disappear from here. I'm not sure if it's really an escape. Does it involve going somewhere else, or do you just vanish? I'm not sure. It's not something that happens to you if you desire it. It's more like an accident. So don't get your hopes up, or else it won't happen. About the moon painting. In one of my Chanice's room in the hall, it has Moon Palace's Crescent Moon logo on it. That logo is from the old world, right? From the real world version of Moon Palace. I think the moon was even given an official name. Something like Selenites. Or was it Mr. Once in a Blue Moon? Well, anyway... I'm certain it has a name related. Well, anyway, I'm sure it has a name relating to something lunar. I strangely remember this character. On the corner of the menu, there was a little character introduction. Don't you remember it? It went into detail about this mysterious personality and affinity for naps. I wonder who thinks of stuff like that. Nobody would even want to read that in the first place. Well, I guess it made for a conversation topic. Hmm. This game's weird. You know what else is weird? Being a non-sub. Because guys, we are an hour in the stream. So it's time for me to run some ads. You can avoid that by subscribing for four ninety nine, just five dollars, skip your coffee, and get ad reviewing all month long. Or you can link your Amazon Prime to your Twitch and hashtag sub for free with Prime. Isn't that pretty cool?
I'm gonna change the title to I'm Stuck Here for Eternity. Eternity? Are you bored? I am bored. I lost interest in everything a long time ago. Looking for a way out of here was a good way to kill time. But I couldn't shake the feeling that it was impossible. So I grew sick of it and gave up. Well, if you change your perspective, the feeling of boredom might just be impatience you feel due to the fit. Might just be impatience you feel due to the infiniteness of life. But here, at an eternal diner, Maybe we don't need to feel bored. I've decided to spend my time aimlessly from now on. Let's chit chat. Um, yeah, sure. What was what we were, was what we were doing up until now not chit chat to you? Well then, I suppose I'll tell a story I share a lot. This happened before I came to Moon Palace. I would commute to work via the subway. The trains weren't as crowded as they were in the city. They were still decently crowded, so I would stand by the doors and stare blankly out the windows while riding to work. It was just a typical day like any other. The train stopped three stations away from my stop. When the door next to me opened, that's when I saw it. On the platform under a bench, there was a golden beetle crawling around. I thought, what the heck? I don't know much about bugs, but I can't say if such a beetle actually does exist, but... I thought if it did exist... It probably wouldn't be around here. As I was pondering it, I really wanted to get off the train and check it out. But if I did that, I'd be late for work. And so, while I was lost in my own thoughts, the door closed and the train departed. I lost sight of the beetle. For a while after that, I couldn't get any work done. I couldn't come up with any ideas. My mind kept going back to that golden beetle. Though I had no particular reason for thinking so, somehow... I thought that that beetle could have been my way out. A way out. Not as in like hitting it rich, something simpler. I thought if I had only held that beetle, I could have been broken free of something. Well, that's the story. What do you think? You obtain misplaced chit chat. Noble chit chat. It's nice we don't have to work or anything here. I guess that's because there are no jobs here to begin with. Well, I kind of enjoyed my job, so I feel like I'm missing out. It was tough work, but still. I might have mentioned this before, but I designed vacuum cleaners. Have you ever stopped and thought about who designed the vacuum cleaners you've used? That's something I liked about it. How I was sort of an unsung hero. The way I fit into the world without taking anyone notice. I was proud of doing that kind of work. Now I have 14 ideas for vacuum cleaners in my head that I've refined after all this time. If I ever get back... No. We shouldn't get our hopes up. We won't get what we want anyway. Misplaced Chit Chat. Once a friend lent me a book she recommended I read. Can't remember the title, but it was some classic mystery novel. She says the book apparently has an astounding truth that shocked the reader. She was so passionate about it, I gave it a read even though I don't read much. Astounding truth aside, it's still a classic mystery novel, so the plot is pretty cliché. There's an old hotel, guests arrive, a murder happens, police rush to the scene. One of the guests just so happens to be a famous detective and starts looking into the case. Sounds familiar, right? Well, I guess it's because I'm not an avid reader, but I started to get bored. I skimmed the book while trying to guess what the twist was. Like, what if it turned out that the first person narrator was the culprit? Or if the murder was actually a suicide? What if the killer turned out to be a man-eating parrot, and the city was actually Mars, not Earth? That sort of stuff. I grew sort of worried. What if the real twist didn't meet my expectations? If a T-Rex showed up and killed everyone in the hotel, for example? That would be unexpected, but... That's about it, right? I ended up thinking, what a waste of my time reading this thing. So I didn't end up finishing it. I'm fine, I'm fine now with never returning to my old life, but 
If I knew things would have ended up like this, I would have finished and let myself experience that disappointment. Hmm. Okay. I want to try to touch the cup again. Hey, don't touch that. Just leave it as it is. Oh, that's probably her friend's cup. Lattery. New bottom text. Ordering our curry is a tasty way to support the Antarctic Con Conservation Society. Random. Back to Chilonica. You stabbed your neck? Ah, glass pan... Ah, glass pan must have brought it up. She told me it was impossible to die here. I could tell that in this sort of place, to common sense would get me nowhere. Sanity and insanity are reversed under these extraordinary circumstances. So I thought I should give it a shot, though I was scared. I tried to stab my neck with my pen, but when I did, my arm relaxed and stopped right when it got close. I tried putting some force into it, but it had no use. It's hard to put into words, but now I understand what she meant. It's not like we have healing powers or the ability to come back after dying, or anything like that. Dying just isn't allowed. It's almost as if it's a rule. Or at least, that's how I see it. I didn't actually want to die, so I was rather relieved. Maybe everybody has to be completely honest in this place. Like, verbally and with how they actually feel. And once you truly accept that you're gonna be stuck here forever and want it, that's when you just vanish. The king's really a woman. Really? Our spike said that. I see. Well, if that's the case, it makes sense why the king doesn't have any descendants. If the king was pregnant, the truth would have been found out right away. But why would they go to such lengths? In a way, it's almost grotesque. This is a bit unrelated, but... If the king is actually a woman, does that mean I'm the only man here? Maybe I'm overthinking it by looking for some sort of pattern. Just because it's unexpected doesn't necessarily mean it holds any significance. About the outside. Out there, there's the moon, but you can't see any stars or anything else. So it doesn't seem like we're in space. Is it a parallel dimension or something? But what, what would that even mean? I know I shouldn't be trying to apply logic to this. Even so, I still keep searching for answers. Oh, the moon? It's always full, so that means... Okay, I already did this dialogue. I forgot if I did or not. If there was like a color change to indicate that I've done the dialogue already with the people. Because I've done this one. About the moon painting. <clears throat> you mean the one by Chenis's door? The one with the crescent moon on it? it? Makes you feel like there's some sort of significance to it, doesn't it? Like if you solved its riddle, some secret door would appear or something. I was curious about what was behind the painting, so I took it down. Didn't find anything. I guess it would have been too good to be true. Are you bored? Yeah? If I had to say I am bored, the only thing I've gathered about our situation is that getting out of here won't be easy. There's not much else to do but have a drink and talk. Even then I'm sure we'll get bored. I wonder if anyone would want to make a tabletop role-playing game together or something. You know, perhaps being stuck in an eternal library instead of a restaurant would have been better. I mean, like, a normal library. 
with books written by people, not with some gimmick. Or the books are randomly generated nonsense or whatever. Yeah. I'm bored. Let's chit chat. Huh, I, I mean, I don't mind, but... Well... Shouldn't chatting happen more naturally? When someone says, let's have a chat, I feel like I should brace myself. Huh. Have you heard of- have you ever heard of parallelaxithenia? Have you ever heard of parallelaxithenia? It's when someone has sort of a deaf blindness. For example, if you were to look out a window, if you were parallelaxithenic, you wouldn't be able to tell which was closer, near the moon. What's more surprising is that even the two- What's more surprising is that even if the two objects overlap, Someone with the condition still couldn't tell the relationship between them. It's not quite as well known as being unable to tell the difference between left and right, but it's a very strange condition. Actually, I just made that up. Did you believe me? I'm no good at small talk. Obtain dreamy chit chat. Okay, well, I kind of believed him. It sounds real. Like lack of depth perception, it sounded real. Dreamy chit chat. We'll never run out of drinks or sugar here, right? Would it be possible to create something like electricity from those if we were knowledgeable enough about science? We might even be able to make something to get us out of here. Maybe it's impossible, but maybe we could build some sort of machine if given enough time. Like a computer or something. But I guess there's no internet, so... I hope the next person to water in is a genius scientist or something. How did you know that- I'm not a genius. Noble chit chat. I don't have many memories from my childhood. Heck, I don't have many memories from my days as a student either. I guess I've never reflected much upon the past. So over time I've just forgotten more and more. You could say I'm always looking forward. But it's not like I'm thinking about my future or anything like that. I can't even recall what it was that I normally thought about. Nothing comes to mind. Misplaced chit chat. I'd like to leave this place if it's possible to do so. But I'm starting to be okay with staying here forever if escape truly isn't possible. I'm not even sure what I'd want to do if I got out. It's not like I have anyone special in my life back home or anything. I haven't had any relatives around since I was little. Even if I'm gone, I don't think anyone would really miss me. Not that it really bothers me. I just notice there's not much I'm attached to, nor is anyone else attached to me is all. I feel like I live my life without getting very involved in anything. Like I was just drifting on the ocean current my whole life. And I just so happened to be booched on moon. Booched. <laughs> And I've just so happened to be beached at Moon Palace. Hmm. He's lonely. Let's talk to the door. What are you afraid of? Huh? That's, well, it's, um, right. The darkness. We've already talked about this. Oh, um, sorry. Anyway, it's really scary. The king's really a woman. Oh, I see. About the outside? Outside? There's nothing outside. There's no way to get out, but I think it's better that way. Just imagine falling into that void. Ah, just the thought is terrifying. about the painting. The painting in the hall? I don't remember it all too well, to be honest. The blank space is rather unsettling, huh? Let's chit-chat. Huh? Alright. Wait, you want me to talk? Um, uh, I've never cried before. I'm all holed up in here, so it's strange, isn't it? It's just how I am. 
No matter how scared, sad, or miserable I feel or how my heart is moved, my body trembles and I have trouble breathing, but I never shed a tear. I'm a little envious of people who can cry. I wonder if tears are cold. You got... Trivial chit-chat. <laughs> Dreamy chit-chat. If... If I was able to go back to Earth, I would like to take a stroll through the city. I have lived without venturing outside much. Cities are amazing with so many people. It's something unimaginable in my hometown. Everyone there knows each other. Noble chit-chat. Uh... Um... This is sudden, but... Do you have anyone you admire? Um... I don't think so. I tend not to get involved with people. I see. Why do you ask? No reason. Oh my god, she likes me! Trivial chit-chat. Lately, I've been listening from in here. I can faintly hear you walking around and talking to the others. It's the liveliest it's ever been. But I haven't heard you talk much about yourself. Hey, don't call me out like that. I'm anxious. Misplaced your chat. I don't really know anything about fashion, but my friends tend to dress me up as if I was a doll. So I rarely wear the same outfit twice. But now, due to the current situation, I've been wearing the same clothes this whole time. I'm still not used to it. Yeah, I've tried everything here. Check out our strawberry dessert. Limited time only. I have run out of things to talk about. I guess that's why everyone stays put where they are. Obtained, I have nothing to talk about. I'm gonna save real quick. The only dialogue that I haven't exhausted with everybody is that there's some new, like, dream or chit chats I can do with people. So I unlock Noble Chit Chat with him. Let's do trivial. Before, my meals were prepared by a number of cooks. Once every few days, a small dish would off. Once every few days, a small dish would often be presented alongside supper. I don't know the name of the dish, but it was simmered beans and a thick red sauce. It was warm, and I rather fancied its sweet and sour flavor. After supper one evening, I called the cooks over and inquired which of them was to thank for the dish and how they made it. However, no one had the answer. Each cook claimed it was not them. It didn't seem like any of them were lying, nor did they have a reason to lie. Everyone was bewildered. There was no meaning in committing such an act if the intention was not to poison me. From then on after, that dish never appeared at my table again. The cooks tried to recreate it with no success. To this day, I wonder what that dish was. Hmm. Misplaced chit-chat. You and the others all come from the same time period. I'm not the same in that regard. You all surely have a place to return to. I, however, am from a country that has faded into history books. Even if we were able to leave this place, everyone I know would be dead. Perhaps that's why I've grown accustomed to my situation here. It's almost like a second life to me. Okay. Desperate chit-chat. Uh, what is the matter? Um, do you have a favorite movie? Movie? Oh, right, sorry. Forget I said anything. Is that a form of amusement for people of your time? Yeah, uh, it's like a moving picture with sound, too. It tells us what- Yeah, um, it's like a moving picture with sound, too. It tells a one or two hour story. Um, it's actually kind of hard to explain. It's like theater that's not done in real time. Well, like, a story? Intriguing. I do like stories. I'm sure this movie you speak of is lovely. Oh, yes. What is your favorite movie? Me? Um, Indigo Dream, maybe. 
It's about a detective who's asked by Talking Watermelon to find what he calls an indigo dream. He never ends up finding it. But along the way, he meets different people and grows close with them. I like that part. I see. It's nice to grow close with someone. If I ever make it out of here, I will be sure to give this indigo dream a go. Thank you for telling me about it. You've obtained offensive chit-chat. It has been some time since you've arrived here at Moon Palace. Are you used to it now? Well, I guess I haven't fully accepted things. But maybe I am getting used to it here. Though, I do have an exam. I see. This might not have been what you wanted, but I'm glad to hear that. You are a strong one. You think so? That's the first time anyone's ever called me that. Really now? I think it's a rather fitting description. If that's not what they call you, then I... If that's not what they call you, then what do they call you? It's kind of awkward saying it myself, but people call me weird, nosy. Huh. Those are fitting descriptions as well. <laughs> hey. I have nothing to talk about. So you've finally worn yourself out. Well then allow me to tell you a story. There once was a duke in my kingdom who was unrivaled in his love for idle talk. He would frequently invite friends to supper and forbade them from returning home, rambling on until the following morning. His friends at a loss for what to do reached a certain solution. They would allow him to speak until he had nothing left to say. So they summoned him to an estate on the lake shore and told him, we have gathered you here to listen to what you have to say, and we have prepared for the task. Speak to your heart's content, paying no mind to how much time has passed. Delighted, the duck, <laughs> the duck. Delighted, the duke burst forth in one-sided conversation. He spoke day and night, while eating, while urinating, and even while sleeping. His friends listened patiently to his every word, and then, in the wee hours of the sixth day. Shortly after, the duke, shortly after the duke spoke enthusiastically the most delicious way to eat small fowl, gesticulating how to grab the small bird by its feet and eat its whole head first. His face suddenly grew noticeably pale. His face suddenly grew noticeably pale, and he slowly closed his mouth. Everyone stared at him in astonishment, and as and and as they did. The duke grabbed his head in both arms, gave a violent jerk, and killed himself right then and there. For what reason, we don't know. There was no way to question the deceased, but his friends determined the reason to be because he had nothing more to talk about. This is no tall tale. It truly happened. There is not necessarily a lesson to be learned here. Hmm. But perhaps you don't need to push yourself to speak at all times. After all... You do not need a conversation topic to spend time alongside someone else. And you do not need to spend time alongside others in the first place. A pearl of wisdom fitting for the king, if I do say so myself. Consider yourself lucky to have heard it. Is he saying when I run out of dialogue I die? Um... Goodbye, king? Trivial, dreamy. I don't remember which one she gave me. I think she gave me misplaced. I'll try them again. Okay, I didn't do dreamy yet. Sometimes I think about if the one who vanished from here wasn't Lattery, but me instead. How would she feel? Would she be sad? Or maybe somewhere in her heart would she feel a little relieved? Would she feel how I do now? It doesn't matter, though. He already did Noble.
trivial chit chat. I've come to this place and I've been given a body that can never die. I've probably lived hundreds of thousands of years by now. Yet, even now, I'm still scared of ghosts and the like. Why? Some things will always be scary, I guess. I also don't like going near Chenna's room. It's so dark over there. I feel as if something is going to pop out. So no telling me any scary stories, alright? Unless... Misplaced chit chat. Okay, this is the- yeah, she made me unlock misplaced. That was it. talk about is the very last thing I say with people. So let's try desperate. Um, what's your favorite animal? My favorite animal? Um, now that you mention it, I haven't seen any living creature that wasn't a human for an absurd- I haven't seen any living creature that wasn't a human for an absurd number of years now. The closest I've come to- The closest I've come to seeing one would have been the penguin picture on the penguin soda dispenser. Before, I might have answered cat. If I were to see a cat now, though, I'm not sure I'd be able to feel the same about it as before. I don't think I'd feel anything at all. Or perhaps I'd be so overwhelmed with emotion at seeing any animal that I'd bawl my eyes out. Weird. Offensive chit-chat. That reminds me. Do you want to escape this place and return home? If... It's possible. I have an exam I can't miss. I see. But if you end up stuck here, you wouldn't need to take exams in the first place. Would you still want to return them? Would you still want to return them? Sorry if it's kind of an insensitive question. Huh. Well, that exam signifies something important to me. To me, there's meaning in taking it. Well, aren't you the model student? The epitome of perfection. She's kind of mean. I have nothing to talk about. I'm sure you have. It has been a while since you've arrived. I've had that same thought many times, and I'm sure we'll. I've had that same thought many times, and I'm sure. I've had that same thought many times, and I'm sure I will from here on out. But don't sweat it. Eventually, you'll forget all the conversations we've had. So we'll talk about the same things over and over again, like it's all new. Thank goodness. I don't like that. Yeah, we unlock dreamy chit chat here. Misplaced. I'd like to leave this place if it's possible to do so, but I'm starting to be okay with staying here forever if escape truly isn't possible. I'm not sure what I'd want to do if I got out. It's not like I have anyone special in my life back home or anything. Oh, I did this already. Oh yeah, cause uh, the other girl gave me the misplaced chit chat. Trivial. Oh, I didn't do this yet. It's nothing important, but a co-worker once told me, even if the world was going to end tomorrow, you'd be the type to still brush your teeth. But wouldn't everyone? I don't think I would. Oh. Is that really how you'd feel? Huh. I'd want to brush my teeth. <laughs> desperate chit chat you know what else i'm desperate for follows because guys we are another 30 minutes in the stream so if you're new here click follow you get cool emotes and you get to type in chat isn't that pretty cool can we hit our daily goal <laughs> 
I'm just waiting for something to happen. Desperate chit chat. What's the matter? Oh, uh. What's your favorite weather? Uh. My favorite weather? You really have run out of things to talk about, haven't you? If I were to give you a serious answer, I'd say I don't have a favorite type of weather. If I must choose, then maybe light snow. Offensive chit chat. It sucks we can't read any books here. Reading was pretty much my only hobby. If only I had something to do here. Did you have any hobbies before you came here? Hobbies? Hobbies. Hobbies? Uh, forget I asked. I guess some people don't have any. No, I'm certain I did have hobbies. At least... Oh. Staring out the window at the night sky while taking study breaks. Wow, that sounds like a good hobby. Thanks. I recommend you try it. Mars is pretty easy to spot. Is it? I'm sure I'll try it out sometime. That is, if I make it back. All I'll see here is the moon. You obtained gloomy chit-chat. Nice. Once, a little warehouse that belonged to my co-worker's father burned down. She invited me to go see the aftermath with her one weekend. I haven't a clue why she did, but intrigued by the absurdity of it, I agreed to go. She drove. The warehouse was located on the edge of a desolate little town. It was completely destroyed, though it had burned down a whole two weeks prior. The surrounding area still smelled of smoke. I didn't have much to do, so I was rummaging through ruins with a stick. I came across a large, charred wooden plank. I flipped it over. And beneath it was a hard-covered children's book, because it's new, buried in the soot. Thinking it odd, I picked up the book and took it over to my co-worker to show her. She was standing by the car. And there she was with a bored look on her face, smoking a cigarette. That's when it hit me. I thought, she is a smoker. Our workplace had a non-smoking policy, so I never knew. <laughs> that that's it yeah huh you obtain drowsy chit chat oh what's wrong nothing in particular no need to worry about me the ambience here at moon palace is filled with absent-mindedness and lethargy don't you feel yourself fading away, less and less able to distinguish yourself from your surroundings? I guess that's what makes me sigh unconsciously. So, in other words, you were just staring off into space? Huh. Yeah. I have nothing to talk about. Nothing to talk about, huh? You're here to talk about how there's nothing to talk about. Alright. Our situation is unchanging, we got nothing but time. So running out of things to talk about is only natural. But talking isn't the only way to spend time with others. I'm sure I've said it before, but we should invite the others over to play a tabletop RPG or something. They normally take forever, so this is a good place for one. Oh yeah, sure. You don't seem very enthused about the idea. <laughs> I don't. Okay, I don't know which ones I've unlocked. Trivial, I think I did already. Misplaced, I did already. Let's do Desperate. Hey. Oh, what is it? Um, do you have a favorite food or anything? Uh, no. I'm not very good at eating. Oh. <laughs> what? Of chit chat. Um, is there anything you hate doing? Well, I guess being asked to be creative. How can I explain it? I'm good at reaching goals to complete tasks, but I'm not really good at creating goals in the first place. Well, I'm not sure you can equate creating goals with being creative. 
Oh, and one more thing. What's that? Sitting still. Oh, I see. Gloomy chit chat. I find this room calming. It's small and there's no windows, but sometimes I get nervous. If. If I were to summon the courage to leave this room, and none of you were anywhere to be found, it would mean that your voices were just all hallucinations born from my fear. If that were the case, what would I need to fear next? Drowsy chit chat. To be honest with you, I lived a dull life before coming here. Not much different from how I live now. The redundancy of it all just blurs time together. I guess that's why even though I may cower in fear at our situation, I do not despair. I'm used to it. Okay, finally, I have nothing to talk about. I see. Um, well... If... If you really need something to do... Can I please ask a favor of you? Your request! Yes! Your request? Um, please hear me out. I want... I want you to get a coffee for me. There's a machine out there that has an out-of-order sign on it. Do you see it? It's actually not broken. So I want you to use it to pour me a cup of coffee. You can just set up by my door. It would mean a lot. I'm gonna get you that coffee. You're my favorite. Middle dispenser. If what Chenna says is correct, then it should be fine. I am not so sure. Oh. Uh, not yet. Why is there a dialogue option for that? Maybe not right now. If something happens, I might not be able to fix it. Um... Imagine I press that button and we just explode. <laughs> I'm going back. I'm gonna go chit chat with everybody one last time, save, and then give her that coffee. Okay, so I unlocked Drowsy, Gloomy. Yeah, those are the only two new ones I unlocked, I think. Yeah. Gloomy chit chat. Contained within the royal castle walls were several hundred years worth of grudges, conspiracy, hatred, and obsession. So naturally, it was only. So naturally, it was a fruitful source of supernatural tales. Gossip was a common pastime amongst the servants and soldiers as well. Tales about the lady's maid who sawed from within the walls, the king who walked the ceilings. The droplets that fell both down and up the stairwell. Countless stories of the sort existed. A rather interesting piece of gossip that I overheard was the so-called five-footed dance. When walking the northern corridor at night, you'd hear a beautiful melody coming from somewhere. Supposedly, you'd hear something dancing a peculiar rhythm to the tune. Whatever was doing the tapping was said to have five feet. And judging by the rhythm made, it was undeniably five, or so the soldier who was patrolling the corridor. It is not by any means a blood-curdling story, but I was rather pleased with the perceptiveness of the soldier who knew how the rhythm of five feet sounded. Drowsy chit-chat. Before arriving here at Moon Palace, I was king whether I liked it or not. Though almost entirely a puppet, I was kept busy. Or well, perhaps I was kept busy because I was a puppet. I was perplexed when I first arrived here. Of course, part of that was due to the nature of the situation. I didn't know what to do with myself. For once, I consoled Glasspen, though she had been the one to arrive before me. Once she calmed, though, I found myself in procession of an absurd surplus of time. To be perfectly honest, I took more pleasure in that than my kingly duties. I spent my time pondering perplexing subjects, staring at the ceiling, that sort of stuff. I will sing a song. Okay. Hi, Kim. Welcome in. Can we get some yo's? Hello. Hello. I will sing a song. Okay. 
I think the game is nearing its end. It's getting scary. What song should I sing? I kind of want to do the new Set It Off song, honestly. Even though this game has me doing a lot of talking. Just yap yap yapping. <clears throat> Let's do fake as friends. You're just people, people. Like the devil in. It's a wrong song. <laughs> Okay, I'm muting my TV. Game should be muted as well. I'm gonna sing the chorus for Set It Off's Fake Ass Friend, their most recent single. I'm very excited for their independent album that hopefully comes out this year. I'm gonna try the chorus. Okay, I gotta remember the rhythm. Okay, I think I got it. If you could put your favorite animated emotes, your favorite, put put your favorite emotes, your favorite animated emotes in the chat, that'd be great. If you want to see a previous playlist, link on YouTube, over here. Okay, I'm gonna try the chorus. <laughs> Show them what they want. Social camouflage. Mirror everyone inside. Such a charming way to lie. Tear us all to shreds till there's no one left. And you're stuck with your fake ass friends. Should I try the bridge? So here's a toast to the greatest actor that I know. Put on a show and never let the curtain close. You sold your soul to who you thought you needed most. Ah, 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 ah. Wait, I don't know the bridge yet. <laughs> Put a foot on my throat for a foot in the door. I found out. Wait, I can't do the bridge. It's so hard. <laughs> The chorus is so fun, though. Like, it's genuinely so fun. Show them what they want. Social camouflage. It's so good. Such a charming way to lie. That's the best line, dude. Set it off is so good. Okay, I tried. So there's no one left. And you're stuck with your fake ass friends. I do wish that song was longer. The actual song was only 215. Very short song. You should make it longer. It feels wait, it feels like a TikTok song. Social camouflage. Mirror everyone inside. Such a charming way to lie. It's so catchy too. Okay, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop. I need to stop. <clears throat> Tear us all to shreds. So there's okay, let's get back to yapping. text from my friend holy shit this is the funniest shit ever this is the same friend who also recommended i buy mario wonder when i literally was streaming mario wonder when they texted me <laughs> they text me i'm gonna paraphrase they don't watch the stream um wait wait maybe they're watching the stream <laughs> they're not they're at work they would watch the stream but they're they work in a warehouse and they have no internet Anyway, they said, I hate being at work and I hate being at home. I might buy an isolation chamber and just fuck myself in it. <laughs> Dude, I hope they're okay. <laughs> All right. What should I say back? Oh yeah, I should reply. <laughs> what should I say? <laughs> 
sorry. <laughs> oh my god. I don't know why it's so funny to me. Sh should I just say emo much? <laughs> okay, but can you sub first? <laughs> <laughs> no, for a while they gave me their prime sub. They always lurked. You guys have never seen them in chat. But then they canceled their prime, so... <laughs> they can't sub anymore. Okay, I'm gonna say emo much. But I feel that. I'm gonna put emo much lol to lighten the blow. I don't. Don't wanna be mean. <clears throat> okay, let's see what they say. Anyway. <laughs> I saw my phone light up with that notification. I was like, oh my god, that's so funny. Okay, back to work. I'm a streamer. Wait, what are my tags? I wanted to double check my tags. Yeah, I do have full time creator tagged. Guys, this is my job. Get back to work. We just did drowsy chit chat, so I think we've exhausted all the dialogue for the king. New dialogue on the bottom. Use your loyalty card to earn a free three day trip. Yo. Now, the only person that we haven't tried the dialogue with is at the Moonview table with Glass Pan. <clears throat> Moomy Chit Chat. Let me tell you about something odd that happened when I was a kid. My sister had a blue parakeet she was very fond of. I think its name was Hydrangea, you know, because it was blue. One day when my sister took him out of his cage, he flew out the window that had been left open. We put posters up around the neighborhood, like the ones you see for lost dogs. But then about a week later, a neighbor found Hydrangea. We thought that was the end of it. But the very next day, another person claimed that they found a parakeet. When we went to go check, that parakeet too looked exactly like Hydrangea. We couldn't tell which was the real one, so we ended up taking both home. But it didn't end there. We got a similar call. Then we had three Hydrangeas. They were all like clones of each other. In the end, we never knew which was the real one. Or maybe they all were the real Hydrangea. I really hope it was just someone playing a trick on us. How terrifying it would be if that wasn't the case. How is that sad? You got three free birds. <laughs> Drowsy chit chat. So this is gonna be the final dialogue. You know, sometimes I sort of lose awareness of my surroundings. Though it's not like I'm sleeping. When I'm listening to others, I nod along and look like I'm listening intently. But then we're done talking. <clears throat> but when they're done talking, I realize that everything they said went in one ear and out the other. Oh my god, it's literally so mean. And it's not because I'm being rude, I just... I have so many thoughts going in my own head. Like, I think about, like... Okay. The way I think sometimes when I have conversations, it literally looks like a dating sim. I will kind of visualize the, all the different things I can say in my head. And because I'm focusing on that, I don't focus what people are saying to me sometimes. That's why I struggle with processing directions sometimes. Or just listening. Maybe I'm toxic. Anyway. Like, even though I realized that I was focused on my own thoughts for so long, I've already forgotten what it was that I was thinking about. Sleep is impossible here at Moon Palace, but sometimes I feel like I lose consciousness. Well, the reason why I bring this up out of the blue is that in the long time leading up to you and Chil- <clears throat> Chalinoka. 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 In- is that in the long time leading up to you and Chilinoka arriving here, everyone just sat at their own seats and didn't interact with each other much. Like everyone was in a state of lowered awareness. Maybe we were awake but not conscious. Um, 
I guess I'm not making any sense. I'm not even sure what it what I'm not even sure what it is I want to say. Huh. Maybe I've fainted and just haven't realized it. Ah, sorry. What am I gonna Ah, sorry. What am I going on about? Hmm. At the beginning we took a pill. Surely it was the drugs. Oh, I can't pick up my pen and stab my neck. Sad. <laughs> my notebook is for studying. I'm going to save. And we are going to give my grill her coffee. <clears throat> What's the right dispenser? It just says liquid. Nothing happens when I push the button. The middle dispenser. If what Chana says is correct, then it should be fine. I'm not so sure. Should I try pressing the coffee machine button? I've got a bad feeling about it. I've exhausted everybody's dialogue, so you know what? I'm gonna go for it. All right, let's give it a shot. Huh? Huh. Oh. Uh-oh. Oh, huh. Uh, someone help. What do I do? You there! You didn't use that broken contraption, did you? It will continue like this for a while. What's with all the racket? Oh, looks like what you did... Oh, looks like you did what I did long ago. Don't sweat it. It'll stop eventually. You do not want to get soaked. You must move. It will be hard to move that substance from your shoes. Um, are you listening? I... She's frozen in shock. There should be some towels by the register. Wait here a moment. What? What's everyone doing? Whoa, everything's drenched. Did you use the broken machine? I'm glad I could resist the temptation of using it myself. Hey. Jelonica, give me a hand here. Grab a towel and start wiping. Oh, right. Sure. King, you look after her. Ah, uh, yes. A king. Babysitter. That freaked me out. I knew it was broken. Was Chenis mistaken? I'll try asking her about it. Oh, I should also thank the others for helping me clean up. You have obtained two new dialogue options. Okay, I, I, I won't save yet. Maybe not. Let's chit-chat with everybody about the fountain first. About the coffee incident. Did I unlock anything else? Oh, the other dialogue option was just for Chenis. Okay. About the coffee incident. The coffee... Oh, you mean the drink dispenser fiasco? Do not fret, for similar incidents has, have occurred in the past. Glasspan, aware that the apparatus was indeed broken, tried to use it to commit suicide. You see, she thought if she pushed the button enough times, the room would flood and we'd drown. Quite the nuisance, if you ask me. There was black liquid all the way up to our backsides. We had to float until the liquid disappeared somewhere. Glasspan found that nothing happened despite not being able to breathe, so she abandoned her plans. Huh. The only one who hasn't tried to off themselves yet is the king, allegedly. And, and, uh, Kenneth. About the coffee incident. It's all right. Don't worry about it. I've done it myself. 
more times too. I guess that's not much consolation. You might still feel bad, but everyone here has messed up in one way or another, especially me. And since we'll be together for a long time, we have to help each other out. It would be rough spending eternity with people you don't think. It would be rough spending eternity with people you didn't get along with, don't you think? True, comrade. That was a disaster. Even with the out of order sign on the machine, you wanted to see what would happen, didn't you? Oh, I'm wrong? Jenna's asked you to do it? I see. As a veteran of the place, you would think she would know what happens when you push that button. I wonder why she asked then. To draw attention? It's probably best if you ask her yourself. Let's go ask her. It doesn't seem like anyone's in there. The door's open. Uh-oh, was she the goop? Chenis, I'm coming in. She's not here. Where'd she go? You obtained Chenis is gone. There's buttons! I don't want to push the buttons. Meter? Okay. Let's do meter first. Some kind of meter? It isn't moving. It looks like it's pointing to a high number. You obtained about the meter. Document. There is something under the cushion. Contingency plan. This is some sort of document. A long document. I think I'll leave it at my table for now. Maybe I can get someone else to have a look at it. You've obtained read this document for me. Book. A hardcover novel. According to the synopsis, it's about a couple who run a lighthouse and encounter a cunning beast. Okay, so the buttons in the document... I assume we press the buttons in a certain order and then we pee pee poo disappear. I'm gonna check the entrances one more time. Okay, where'd Shannis go? Document. Okay, I will read this after the break. Because, guys, we are an hour in a stream. So it's time for me to run some ads. You can avoid the dead by subscribing for $4.99, just $5. Skip your coffee and get ad free viewing all month long. Or you can link your Amazon Prime to your Twitch and hashtag sub for free Prime. Click subscribe. See if you have a sub available. Okay, let's read this document. <clears throat> Two pages. This document was written to inform caretakers how to properly handle drifters. Due to shortcomings in the current system, drifters may appear. Caretakers are therefore required to read this document. Number one. Procedure when in the form stage. During the form stage, being seen by drifter is not a violation of the law. We recommend you act as a drifter yourself during interactions. Once you have gained their trust, look for the opportune time to perform the procedure and send the drifters back. Please be aware that any act of violence excluding necessary procedures is a violation of the law. Furthermore, if you determine that the use of the kitchen is too risky, please send a telegram to headquarters and wait for personnel to be teleported. It may take time, but it is the most reliable method. Number two, procedure when in the non-form stage. During the non-form stage, top priority must be given to hiding from the drifter's sight, as it is extremely likely to be deemed a violation of the law. Once the presence of a drifter has been confirmed, enter the staff room and lock the door. Next, send a telegram to headquarters and wait for personnel to be teleported. If the drifter becomes aware of your presence, do not respond. All other methods are highly dangerous. Do not attempt to resolve the situation by yourself. Number 3. 
Procedure when equipment is under maintenance. Rescue cannot be called during maintenance periods. When in the form stage, please conduct the procedures outlined in number one above and send the drifters back. When in the non-form stage, give top priority to hand... Dang it, I almost did this perfect. When in the non-form stage, give top priority to hiding from drifter's site and attempt to form. You can wait for maintenance to be completed and then send a telegram to request personnel to come, but this will take an extremely long amount of time. In case 1-1, the caretaker at the time, number 14, fell into an irreversible mental state while waiting in the staff room for the maintenance period to end and is still in detainment as of the writing of this document. Therefore, we recommend you form, even if it may result in violation of the law, in case 6-3, the caretaker, number 46, took action to form while, which resulted in a violation of the law, but they were then pardoned by the executioner. Number 67. Number 4. Operating the gate. In many cases, the caretaker does not know how to open and close the gate. During normal times, attempting all combinations is acceptable, but in emergency situations, switch act. But in emergency situations, swift action is of the utmost importance. The procedures for opening and closing the gate are as follows. Number one, check machine. Number one, check machine one to confirm the three numbers. The number of menu items and their positions change periodically. Please check machine one every time. Number two, push the left, right, and middle button in that order. The corresponding number of times confirmed in step one. 5. What to do with this document in an emergency? In an emergency, please dispose of this document so that it cannot be seen. It will be reissued at a later time. Document author Klein, number 68. Something happened to her. Hmm. So. Okay, it's obvious that Chen is, is not one of us. Maybe she's someone... Maybe these people, like, died? And we're stuck in, like, the in-between between reality and, like, a spirit world? And then when we've fully accepted that we're going to die, she teleports us back to, like, never happened. That's my guess. Okay, let's chit-chat with everybody, see what's going on. <laughs> Janice is gone. Oh my! Either she's hiding or she disappeared. Disappearances have occurred before. I doubt she would have reason to hide. But it's too early to come to any conclusions. Is there any way to make oneself disappear? I'd certainly like to be made aware of it. Read this document for me. This was in Janice's room. Well now? I see. Hmm. Line? No. It couldn't be. Oh, I'll give this back to you. This Klein. Hmm. Chenis is gone. I see. She's gone too, huh? It'll be a little lonelier without her. Can you read this document for me? This was in Chenis' room. This isn't written by hand. It's been printed. But there's no printer here. I suppose you can harden and carve sugar to make a rudimentary printing press. Let's give it a read. What is this? Chenis knew about this this whole time and never told us about it. But why? I don't want to distrust her, but... Well... My confusion about all of this only seems to grow. Hmm. Wait, the text at the bottom? Mankind once saw the waxing and waning of the moon as an eternal cycle of destruction and rebirth. Oh, I thought that was gonna be lore. <laughs> okay, let's talk to... Chilonica. Chenis is gone. Chenis is gone, you say? Huh. How do you even know? 
Her room was unlocked and nobody was there when I looked inside. Oh. It's possible there's some sort of special mechanism in that room. If not, then that means Chetis must have left, or at least tried to leave her room before disappearing. She's never left that room until now. It feels like something's going on here. Can you read this document for me? Dude, my nose is so itchy. Uh Can you read this document for me? You found this under a cushion in Chenis's room. That's not particularly a great hiding spot. Well, anyways, let's have a look. Huh. We have no way of knowing what's in here is real or not, but let's just assume that's the case. We could interpret what's written here like this. Moon Palace is some sort of facility made by humans or human-like life forms. We only ended up here by accident. Sounds like the caretaker would have kicked us out immediately under normal circumstances. But for whatever reason, it is impossible for them to do so, or the caretaker is gone. At least, that's how I'm reading this. It's possible that Chanis is the caretaker. But if that's the case, I'm so curious as to why she hasn't disposed of this document. It's all just conjecture at this point, though. Well... If what it says about getting the gate to open is correct, then everything becomes more credible. You obtained how to open the gate. How to open the gate? Again, this is just a guess, but... Machine 1, in here may be the soda fountain we use all the time. The number of items on the machine is 2, 4, and 1, from left to right. Does that mean we need to push the left button twice? The right button once, then the middle button four times in that order. Honestly, I don't want this to be correct. If this is an artificial space, then operating this gate goes against the sophistication of the technology. It'd be too easy. Like, we're being made to complete a puzzle made... <clears throat> like, we're being made to complete a puzzle made by a child. Why not try it, though? Oh, only he can tell me how to fix the puzzle. Guess he's the smart one. I'm gonna check on the middle of the dispenser again. I don't want to get soaked again. It just says liquid. So two for one, if he's right about that. I'm gonna double check the document one more time. In emergency situations, swift action is of the utmost importance. The procedures for opening and closing the gate are as follows. Okay, maybe... Okay, my theory. My game theory. Chanis wanted us to use the middle machine because she knew that it was going to spill. And us cleaning the spill is a distraction. So then maybe she creeped out of the room, saw how many different soda flavors there were on the machine as we're cleaning. She goes back in the room, opens the gate, now that she knows how many times to press the button. Something must have happened to her. And she had to leave. Oh, the number of menu items in their positions change periodically. Please check machine one every time. Oh, so that's why she couldn't escape sooner. Okay, left, right, middle buttons in that order. So left, right, middle. I'm going to save. So left. Right middle. I forgot how many flavors there are. <laughs> I'm going to write it down. <clears throat> 
Okay, so left, right, middle. Two, four, one. Left two, right four, middle one. Wait, I did it. Entrance. It didn't open. Dang it! Did I do it wrong? Yeah, there's nothing else to click in this room. I'm gonna try again. Left two. Right four. Middle one. It didn't work. Let's talk to Chilonica again. How to open the gate. Oh, wait, he's telling me what to do. <laughs> Uh, right button once, middle button four. Okay, I had the, I had the flavor numbers mixed up. I'm D-U-M. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna save one more time. <laughs> Silly me. Left two, right one, middle four. I made a sound. Something new on the map, the kitchen. Obtained. I found a new room. There was a room like this back here. This is a fridge. The fridge. Please just be food. Try to open the fridge. Not yet. It's a little unnerving. Box. In the trash can there's... Some blackish liquid buildup. The coffee. The moon. You can see the moon from here too. Wait. Given what this room is, you shouldn't be able to see the moon, should you? Are there two of them? Obtain, there are two moons. True. Because the moon was on the opposite end of the building. Okay, let's chit chat with everybody one more time. And then we'll try to open the fridge. I found a new room. Sometime after you entered Chenis's room, I saw the wall in front of the room move. In my castle, there were several secret passageways that even the architects didn't know about. It seems that something was hidden here as well. I wonder what could be there. There are two moons. I see. It's hard to be surprised about anything anymore. This is Moon Palace after all, and things are different from our world.
Hmm. I found a new room. Huh? All this is making me dizzy. What's going to happen next? I wonder if my friend will come back. There are two moons. Huh. You can see a moon from the new room, too. That's scary. Sorta of sends shivers down your spine. It does? You don't think so, too? Whatever. Why is nobody, like, getting up to go look at it themselves? They're just having me do everything. Am I the protagonist? I found a new room. Huh? You don't mean the instructions in that document were correct, do you? That would also mean the document itself was the real deal. Someone created this place, and there's a way out. However, the document doesn't specify how to do so. Hi, Rocket. Welcome in. Can we get some yo's? Hello. There are two moons. I see you've also noticed. I had a look at the new room, too. Okay, so he did get up and look. Considering its position, I don't think it's the same moon. If there are two of them, they can't be the same one we see on Earth, right? So we can't be on Earth or ever So we can't be on Earth or anywhere in space near it. Another dimension, maybe? Or is this some kind of simulation? Hmm. Quick little save and then we'll open the fridge. Fridge. Please just be food. I'm gonna open the fridge! Here goes nothing. Ooh, more goop. Whoa. More black liquid. The whole floor is covered in it. Let's get this thing open. A person? Who is that? It isn't Chenis, is it? Hmm. Uh oh. Huh? Huh, what? What are you doing here? Oh. You're Chenis, aren't you? I, uh. Um, this was all just an accident. That's right. I left my room, and I saw a pathway I'd never seen before. It led me to this room with a fridge. I thought I'd have a peek inside, and I slipped and fell in it by mistake. Thanks to you, though, I'm saved. Hey, are you okay? Oh. Yeah? I'm fine. Um... I've been far too suspicious, haven't I? I've always... I've always been like this. Even though I try my hardest, I always screw things up. It's pathetic, really. I hate myself. I can't say much, but... Please believe me. I'm just scared. I can't tell you the truth, but I... I can't tell you the truth, but I at least won't trick you again. I'm sorry. I've probably caused a lot of trouble for everyone. I'll go apologize. I'm sorry. Refrigerator. It won't open. Box. Same black liquid. Corner is now unlocked. It's Chenis. Ah, um, hi there. I've left that old room, uh, as a way to let you know that I won't pull any more tricks. Feel free to use the room however you like. Can you, like, tell us how to get out? Is there any cake? No. Is there any creamer? 
There isn't any. Probably. Glass band used the last of it a long time ago. The machine was broken. I know about that. I'm sorry. Yeah, she tricked us. About the coffee incident? Yes, about that. I did a really terrible thing. I'm sorry for being so deceitful. I was desperate to distract everyone. See, I knew it! Can you read this document for me? Oh. Where did you get that? I found it in your room. I see. Interpret it how you like. About the meter? Um, you mean the one in my room? I'm not really supposed to talk about it, though I feel I also have a responsibility to say something. I can't go into much detail, but it displays the time remaining. Once it hits the bottom, it will end. What will? I, um, things? There are two moons. That's right. There are two of them. They each have their own purpose. What does the meter mean? It measures the time left. All this is a waiting game until it reaches the bottom. It's probably not exactly reassuring to hear, but this state is not eternal. No matter how long it takes, it won't be an eternity. Once passed, even millennials seem like the blink of an eye. Okay. Let's go back to the room. She said once it reaches the bottom. I want to try the buttons again. Left two. Right one. Middle four. Okay, nothing. <laughs> Soda fountain. I don't want to get soaked again. It just says liquid. The thing happens when I push the button. Okay, I'm gonna talk to everybody else one more time. All the dialogue reset. Okay. Is there any cake? No. You must have seen the poster. There is none. Okay, these are all the same. I'm gonna ask what the meter is. You heard about this from Chanis. I see. That is quite long. If it's going to reach the bottom, i like it to be quick about it. I have confidence in your curiosity. I have something I wish to entrust you with. Come talk to me about it if you like. Then trust me with what? I haven't spoken to anyone about this yet, but... Just before I arrived here at Moon Palace, I received something from someone. She said to me, when you find someone you can trust, give them this. You yourself are never to look inside. I don't know the reason, however, considering it was her final wish, I was contemplating a suitable candidate. You are a trustworthy individual. Among the residents of Moon Palace, you are the most sincere and wholesome. Therefore, I shall entrust this to you. The king gave me a box with a combination lock. I'll leave it at my table for now. I don't even know how to open it, so I leave everything to you. Now, I've done my duty. Let's check out the box. Box. This is the king's box. Looks like it needs a 16-digit password. What's the password? I have no idea. I wonder if anybody else would know. Obtain password to the box. Oh. It's, it's like numbers and letters. See, zero, one, two, Z, X, S, and then symbol. Okay. 
Let's keep chit chatting. The password to the box? He got this from the king? He doesn't know how to open it either. Huh. Why don't you just smash it? That might also destroy what's inside. I suppose that's true. But if the content of the box is from Moon Palace, it might be indestructible like the furniture and everything else here. Oh, I guess that would mean the box is indestructible too. Looks like you're out of luck. Dude, you're no help. The password to the box? A 16-digit password, huh? Any clue about where to start? No idea. 16 digits is a lot. I don't think it's realistic to brute force it by trying all possible combinations. But, not like anything that happens here is realistic. So maybe we shouldn't be log logical about it. Given the circumstances, maybe brute forcing it is what you're supposed to do. I mean, we do have time. So theoretically, we could try all 16 digits. The password to the box? I haven't the slightest idea either. The person who gave it to me said nothing about how to open it. Maybe she didn't know either. Corner. Chenis. The password to the box? A box? I don't know anything about that. But if you check every possible combination, you'll open it eventually. Perhaps that's how it's designed to be opened, as there's no keyhole. Card reader or fingerprint scanner. No way! No way! Okay, okay. Okay, right here. Operating the gate. In many cases, the caretaker does not ha know how to open and close the gate. During normal times, attempting all combinations is acceptable, but in emergency situations, swift action is the utmost importance. The procedures are as follows. Right here it says, attempting all combinations is acceptable. Maybe it's referring to the box as well as the fridge. Okay, I don't think... Um, there's probably like a number code hidden. It's also weird because here... Oh, it skips five because the one and two are part of step number four. The only other hidden numbers are case 11, number 14, caretaker number 14, case 63, number 46, number 67, number 68. Okay, so it is kind of like one through nine. Maybe it, okay, it's 16 digits. I think it's the numbers in the document. So I'm gonna write them down in order. 
So in case, case 11, number 14, uh, case 63, uh, caretaker number 46, executioner, so caretaker number 67, Document author Klein number 68. Okay, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's 12 digits. Check I have all the numbers right. Okay, case 11. Caretaker number 14. Case 63. Caretaker number 46. Executioner number 67. Document author number 68. It's still 12. I'm checking the response one more time. look at the documents in the box one more time. Okay, so he recognizes the name Klein, the guy who wrote the document. And she says to break it. No, he said to break it. Yeah, why don't you just smash it? And then I think he also said to smash it.
Given the circumstances, maybe brute forcing it is what you're supposed to do. I don't think so. Looks like it's pointing to a high note. Maybe I have to try every single number. Okay, so one, one. One, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six, seven. One, two, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Resets. Okay. Maybe you do have to like go through every single combo. Um, how would you even do that? Oh, my God. It's virtually impossible to just guess. I really don't want to do this, but... Should I try all possible combinations to open the lock? It'll probably take a tremendous amount of time. I'm ready or maybe not. I'm ready. All right, here I go. Oh my god, it does it for me! Okay, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I don't need to do it myself, but you know, I don't mind this. 1,000. Interesting how they're starting from the right. Maybe they're from the EU? Okay, not- you don't read from the right. <laughs> I was thinking driving, the opposite side. Oh, you're trying all possible combinations? Good luck! Don't worry, we got a lot of time. Man, my fingers are... quick. 
Um, ladies? Ten thousand. This is rough. Looks like a slot machine. <laughs> Yikes. You're not trying all possible combinations, are you? It's 16 digits. That's one way to pass the time. Yeah, you guys aren't doing anything else. I might as well do something with my time. Still only at a million? No, it's better not to think about it. And to think I would have thought I had to do this by hand. <laughs> Imagine. Excuse me. Oh wait, that's Chennis. Do you want me to help? Do your best. I'm the only one who's ever done work around here. I'm trying to get us all out. What if it's just like a jack in the box? And when we open it, swing! Ah, uh, halfway there. Who am I kidding? I'm nowhere near halfway done. Jeez. At least the music's different. You there? I did not expect you to make it this far. To be honest... Oh, wait, that's the king. To be honest, I once tried the same. Nine digits was as far as I got. I cannot thank you enough. However, nobody would blame you for giving in now. I will never give up. Mm-mm. I'm tough, and I'm strong. I got fingers of steel. And am massively stubborn. I bet whenever I unlock this, we're gonna stand up and go to the room, and the meter's gonna be almost done. It's been a while. I don't want to interrupt your work or anything, but... I've actually come with something of an invitation. I've finally finished writing the campaign for my tabletop RPG. After 200 years. It's a grand saga that spans generations. It'll probably take around 10 to 100 years to play through. Last Pan, the King, Chenis, and I are going to play it together. Come play with us if you feel up to it. I've designed it so that you can join partway through, though. I'm not 
finish this. I don't care about your stupid little game. Man, I haven't eaten anything either. I must be thirsty and hungry. Come on. Only four digits left. <laughs> I'm just like, please end me. Huh? What? What was that sound? Password match. Lock disintegrated. Huh? Ah. <laughs> oh. It... It opened. How long has it been? I was so focused. I wonder if everyone else is still here. What's this in the box? Obtained It's Been a While. Engraving. Engraving. With this straw, drink the tears of the moon. Like, from the soda fountain? It's a golden straw. All that work for this? I guess I'll try drinking with it. Okay, let's chit-chat with everyone. It's been a while. It has. I've been watching from here this whole time. You were so focused. I was afraid to bother you. I'm glad you got it open. I bet you would, Jenna's. Let's check our room. Okay, the meter is still at the same height. So, we still have an eternity left. It's been a while. It truly has been a long while, though I have seen you in the literal sense. I commend you on successfully opening the box. Do as you like with its contents. It's been a while. That's right. It has. It's been ages. Almost too long for words, really. You've been here long enough that now you're a proper resident like the rest of us. When the next guy comes around, you can show him the ropes. Acting like a hardened veteran is a good way to kill time. Did I miss the game? You're right. How long has it been? If the combination was 16 digits, then... It must have been a few hundred thousand years or so. Long time no see. Honestly, I thought if I spent this much time here, I would have gone mad. But I'm actually doing rather well. Maybe because I'm not alone. So not much has changed for me or the others. You, on the other hand, well, you might have gone mad after solving that box. Hey. I did what none of you wanted to do. Misclick. I'm gonna save and then we're going to drink the moon juice. It said moon tears, right? The straw's in the cup now. I feel... sleepy. Uh-oh. I'm home! Well, I'm beat. 
The moon is really nice tonight. With a moon like this, I think I'll go to a diner. No, don't go! Don't go! It's pretty cold out. Quiet, too. Moon Palace. I've heard the name somewhere before. I didn't know there was a place like this around here open this late. Welcome. We've been waiting for you. Your friend is already here. Right this way, please. My friend? There must be some mistake. I'm here alone. Yes, but... They've been waiting an awfully long time for you. Right this way, please. Right this way. Please, have a seat. Outside? Who are you? Looks like you've been waiting for me, but... Try to remember. How did you get here? Um, well... I was studying for my test and, well... Thought I'd go to a diner for a break. But before that... Before you were studying, what were you doing? Before that, I was... What was I doing? Try to remember. I'm sure you can. Huh? Well, I... I drank mood tears with the golden straw, and then... Huh. What happened to me? You're aware now. I'm Klein. More precisely, I'm a data-based replica of Klein. At any rate, I'm glad we're able to meet. I can finally fulfill my promise. Wait, back up a second. I want to know exactly what is going on. Excuse me. We'll take things at your pace. You need a topic for conversation, don't you? Let's see. All right, here we go. Have this one too. All right, you should be ready to go now. Please, take your time. After all, we have plenty of that. And Klein still has the black goo drink. What's the situation? To put it simply, you're having a dream of sorts, as a result of using the straw and moon tears. The information within the straw is able to replicate Klein inside your brain. That's how we are able to speak like this. It's almost like having a split personality and being able to talk to the other half. Should I be scared? Am I going to be here with you forever now? Please do not worry. The half-life of Moon Tears is only around 30 minutes. Afterward, you can simply use the straw again to return here. Oh, I got I, I, I got speedrun. Who are you? I am number 68 of the Moon Klein. I was once a technician there. Currently, my real body is on the moon of exile. Oh. Is... Is there anything else you should add? Like, what about number 68 of the moon or moon of exile means? Any details? At all? I actually do not know much about Klein. I'm merely a replica created from the information contained within the straw. All of my information has been selected by Klein. I do not possess memories that are deemed unnecessary. But rest assured, that means that I do not need to know information I am unaware of. Okay. Master Evader, I guess. What's your intention? I only wish to fulfill the promise made to the king. That is why I've called you here. The king? I'm certain you know who I'm talking about. Railroad Spike. That is the name of my king. It all comes back to him, doesn't it? About the straw? Many lunar devices hide in plain sight, disguised as common objects used by humans. The straw you obtained is one of them, and I was the one who created it. By itself, the straw does nothing. However, if used in combination with any of the drinks at Moon Palace, it has various effects. So if I drink something else first, I might not have gotten here. It was originally intended to pass into the hands of the Executioner. However, now you have it. I'm sure it is all Klein's plan. Your promise? I made a promise to the king to grant him a peaceful and ordinary life. That's quite an ambiguous and difficult goal. However, with lunar technology, it is possible. 
Klein's plan is already halfway completed, and I would like to request that you fulfill the remaining half. It's a simple process. First, you must use the soda fountain and straw to generate the restoration pills and tokens. Then give one of the pills to the king. With that, he will lose his memory and will be able to live as a normal human being. The king trusted you enough to hand you the box. Surely he will consent to a request from you, no questions asked. Afterward, give a token to the caretaker of Moon Palace. And then my promise to the king will be fulfilled, and you will be able to return to Earth. So please, do this for me. Why though? Why don't I drink the wrong juice? The Executioner? The Executioner is the one who judges us and executes our sentences. Only one of us is chosen for the role, the one determined to be the most truthful and responsible. Your relation to the king? I don't remember. It should be important information, but all memories involving my relationship with the king are gone. This is only conjecture, but Klein may have considered her feelings for the king to be a hindrance to her accomplishing her mission. What if this Klein is like bad Klein and then the pill kills the king? So what if we don't do it? You know what I don't want to do, but I kind of have to do? Run an ad break, is guys. We're three hours on the stream, so it's time for me to run some ads. You can avoid that ad by subscribing for four ninety nine, just five dollars. Skip your call if you can get ad free viewing all month long, or you can link your Amazon Prime to Twitch and hashtag sub for your Prime. Click subscribe, see if you have Prime sub available. Another thing is, I gave the Klein person a similar voice to Chenna's, because they kind of look alike. And I assume the caretaker is just iterations of Klein's vessels. The straw's function. The straw's effects can be seen when combined with the drinks. However, some drinks have no effect. The three effects I can remember the straw having are storing and displaying information. That's what is happening now. Generation. Storing and displaying information. That is what is happening now. Generating restoration pills, as well as generating tokens. I believe other effects exist, but that information does not appear to be in my memory. Perhaps, there were some that interfered with other people's minds. Also, I do not remember which beverage has which effect, so please try it out for yourself. There shouldn't be anything too exceedingly dangerous. Okay, so I do have to try the other juices. Restoration pill? It was originally created to treat those who had fallen into an irreversible mental state. However, it didn't work, but eventually we learned that it had some other effects on ourselves and humans. Once taken, the user's memories are erased and replaced with new ones. The new memories vary by individual, however, they are typical human memories. That's to say the user becomes a different person. Here is where it gets interesting. Although the user has the memories of someone who never existed, they are able to easily integrate into human society. Normally, one would struggle with this discrepancy because false memories and reality. However, the pill subtly alters the world to align with the new memories and maintain consistency. Wait, I took the pill at the start! No, oh, I fell for it! That's amazing. The technology isn't quite as advanced as you may think. Though I phrased it as altering the world in actuality, it simply involves some slight meddling with the minds of many humans. That's still amazing. I suppose to humans it would be. Anyways, I'll continue. This is just the first effect of the pill, as taking it again will restore the person's memory. So it can be taken again as a failsafe in the event of accidental ingestion. There are no effects at all, but there are no effects at all beyond two ingestions. That is to say, it can only be used to erase a person's memory once. Please take care when using it. So if I take two pills, this would never happen. I might do that, honestly. <laughs> Tokens? Tokens are required to use certain lunar devices. The devices use them as a sort of currency or power source, if you will. And there are devices at Moon Palace too that require them. One of them, one of which is the teleporter. He will need it to be teleported back to Earth. 
Normally there are tokens at Moon Palace at all times, though at the moment they seem to be depleted. It's the goddamn creeper! About Moon Palace? It's one of the facilities we use. It has many uses. As it is currently undergoing maintenance, most of us will not visit. I have no further information on the subject. Who is us? Did I say us? You did. We are those who belong to the moon. Um, there are 113 of us. That appears to be the limit of my memory on the subject. 113. I'm gonna write that down. Caretaker? The caretaker is stationed at Moon Palace to take care of teleportations and other operations. No matter their circumstance, Moon Palace is always to have one. Always. I would guess that they have taken human form just as I have now. Therefore, there would be no clear way to distinguish them from the others. A good taker would never be obvious. If you're not certain about who the caretaker is, then I would suggest you give tokens to everyone. As long as they have a token, the caretaker can use the teleporter. Wait, she said they would make it not obvious. But Chenis is like obviously the tele the caretaker. And but if I can give a token to everybody, it's fine. Okay, I've exhausted all the dialogue, so let's leave. Oh, I'm back here. So I guess if I want to talk to her more, I gotta drink the moon tears. So I basically have to drink all the different juices, get tokens, and then get pills, glass syrup. Pretty good. It did nothing! Silver water. I think... I think I'm gonna hurl. Oh. Uh. I feel awful. What? A pill? I don't remember taking this. Did I generate this? You've obtained give pill. Okay, silver water is pill. I'm gonna write that down. Silver water means pill. Black booze. Something's happening. Uh. My throat still feels weird. It's creamer? I threw out creamer? I don't get this at all. You've obtained give creamer. Okay, creamer is obviously the tokens. Black booze is creamer. Primordial soup. It's almost like I can see someone, but they blur with the surroundings and fade away. Maybe I should get closer to them, whoever they are. Oh, because it's close to moon tears, maybe? Apple juice. So delicious. But nothing happened. Penguin soda. It's so carbonated. Huh. I don't think anything happened. Let's drink some more black booze. I want more creamer. How many times this is gonna happen? This is too weird. 
Okay, I'm gonna drink it one more time. <laughs> I don't know how many I need to drink. Same dialogue. Maybe once you get it, you have like just infinite supply. You don't gotta keep drinking. Silver water is the pills. Let's try one more time. Yeah, this is nasty. These things just keep on coming. Okay, I'm gonna drink the moon tears to go chit chat with her one more time. To make sure I give the pills and the creamer to the right people. Yeah, straight back here. Okay. Not destroy your promise. Tokens. Pills. So she said, just be careful when using it. Caretaker. The caretaker is stationed at all- The caretaker is stationed at Moon Palace to take care of teleportations and other operations. No matter the circumstance, Moon Palace is always to have one. Always. I would guess that they have taken human form just as I have now. Therefore, there would be no clear way to distinguish them from the others. A good, taker, a good caretaker would never be obvious. If you're not certain about who the caretaker is, then I suggest you give tokens to everyone. As long as they have a token, the caretaker can use the teleporter. I don't want to give her the pill. I'll give her creamer. Oh no, I don't... Um, let's give the cream to somebody else. Let's see. Oh, thank you. I thought there wasn't any left. Where did you find this? I threw it up. I see. Okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to give the pill yet. I'm scared. Let's give her creamer. Whoa, creamer. I'm shocked there's still any left. It's pretty good when you mix it with the black booze. I don't know where you got it, but thanks. Well, thank you. That's very kind of you. I'll use it later. Should I give the bill to people? I don't know. Here's the creamer. Give her the creamer. There may be no going back once done. You need to get out of here. Well, thank you. Really. I'm sorry for all the trouble I've caused. Goodbye. Now, allow me to perform the final procedure. Final procedure? Oh. She's a moon? A floating ball? Excuse me. Excuse me. Ah. Uh -huh. 
Are you alright? Huh? Oh. I guess I dozed off. I'm sorry. I'm fine. Was it all just a dream? It's so late out. I better head home. Okay. Teleportation permitted. Good work out there, Chenis. I heard about everything. It seems like you've been through a lot. I'm sorry. Don't worry about it. Everything worked out, didn't it? You did well in the face of unprecedented circumstances. Thanks. Ah, oh, damn. There's just no end to this. Lottery. What was that glass pan? Huh? What did I say? You said lottery or something. I did? You definitely did. Is that someone's name? Not that I know of. I was just spacing out. I don't think it means much. <laughs> well, you should cut it out. It's a little freaky. This is such a boring book. It's so redundant. I suppose the author thought this was a shocking twist. Well, even so, I'll read the whole thing. I don't have anything else to do anyway. I should get some sleep. Is everybody going back home? Wait, I didn't give the king a pill. I'm cooked. I was a bit worried about living in the future, but it seems everything has worked out somehow. Hmm. Everything is quite a bit cheaper here than the grocer by the station. Wait, is it the king? Enjoy the diner. Doesn't exist, Lattery. <laughs> Unwitting executioner, Shalonica. something wrong complete ending two to unlock I want to go back in I don't think that was right because this sequence we went back we're like where are we and then it cut to Ah, uh, what was her name? The girl. And she still had the memory of the- I don't remember the names. The girl who went pee-pee-poop and disappeared. It's probably because I didn't give everybody the pills. So I guess whenever you give the token to the caretaker, everybody just goes back to their homes. Hmm. I'll try again. Start story load. Okay, I have the creamer and pills still. I'm gonna give people the pills. The mission was to give the king a pill, at least, minimum. Give pill. What is this? You want me to swallow it? I trust you enough to do us. 
I trust you enough to do as you request. Surely it's for a reason. Um, that's what a uh, client told me to do, so... Yes. Down the hatch it goes. How do you feel? I... I feel... Oh, wh where? Who? Huh? Obtained, give another pill. Obtained, who are you? I don't want to give him another pill because then he's going to go back to the king and that's not what Klein wanted. Who are you? Ahem. <laughs> My name is Spike. Good introductions aside, what is this place? I'm certain I was at my residence only moments ago. Wait, what are these garments I'm wearing? This is Moon Palace. Oh. Obtain, don't worry. Don't worry about it. Oh? Very well. Okay, I'm gonna try and give her the creamer. Just only giving the king the bill, because that was my mission. I'm not supposed to give pills to everybody, I don't think. Excuse me. Okay, I'm back to normal. What if I take a pill? Okay, this is all the same so far. Was I the unprecedented circumstance? All the same, still. Oh! This is different. Well, bunch of flakes are increasing in price, I think it said. Well, I got a pay raise recently, so whatever. What should I make today? Oh, be oh, oh, okay, because previously it was the king recalling. He's like, man, things are so expensive in the future. But now that I gave the king the pill, he doesn't know that things are supposed to be expensive. So I think this is what, like, the ending you're supposed to get. I'm back here. Complete ending 2 to unlock. I still didn't do it! Dang it. Let's try again.
But the dialogue was different in that final cutscene. I kind of want to give everybody a pill and see what happens. Oh wait, no, maybe... Maybe I give him two pills. I'll try that first. Obtain, give another pill. Take it again. What sort of pill is this? Um, I'd like you for just to go ahead and take it for now. Give the king another pill! Down the hatch with it. How do you feel? Say, what sort of pill did you give me? My memory's from someone I don't even know. You're back. My head is spinning in confusion from the stark differences between my time and the time of the person whose memories I now possess. Automobiles, for instance. They are, ordered, they are ordinary to me, yet a great marvel at the same time. What is it exactly that you are attempting? I just wanted to bring you back. Give me another one! <laughs> another pill? <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's see what happens now. But Klein did say once you give him two pills, any pills after that have no effect. Well, I guess, because, like, if Chanis teleports out, they could just have another t caretaker come in again. But either way, they've unlocked the golden straw, so I think that's why no matter what ending, the king is still reincarnated. Because I unlocked the box that had the straw on it. I was a bit worried about living in the future, but it seems everything has worked out, somehow. Hmm. Everything is quite a bit cheaper here than the grocer by the station. Yeah, because the... In this scenario, the king lost his memories and then regained them again. So, so kind of the same outcome? Are you still aware? Now I want to try and give everybody a pill, see what happens. I'm still curious as to what like the beginning sequence of the game means, because in that sequence I take a pill. 
So is that where, like, I wake up with the consciousness of the high school student who needs to take their exam? Let's try again. We are going to give everybody here a pill. Everybody bottoms up. Give glass pan a pill. What's this? You want me to take it? No way. I'm too scared. You take it first. Uh, no way. Then don't come around here asking me to take it. Take it back. I don't want it. Jeez. Okay, maybe they won't take it. Huh? What's this? Some kind of pill. Where did you get this? I threw up and it came out of me. And you're giving it to me? I don't want to take something so suspicious. I'll, uh, yeah. You can keep it. Hmm. If I give it to Chet, she'll just forget everything and then we're stuck here forever. Where did you find this? I barfed and it came out of me. Thanks. I might have a use for this. Okay, let's try it. So she doesn't take it, but she holds on to it. Back here again. I bet she's going to take the pill once she's out. There's just no end to this. Lottery. Okay, she's still saying lottery. Oh, that is glass pan. Okay, never mind. I got confused. Yeah, this is still glass pan POV. Have Machi Flakes always been this expensive? Well, I got a pay raise recently, so whatever. What should I make today? Oh yeah, because I, I didn't I only gave the king one pill that time. Oh, same thing!
Hmm. I mean, Jinnus was the only one who, like, actually took the pill besides the king. Thank you for the lurk, Rockhead. Hmm. Okay, I did not unlock the secret ending. I'm going to talk to Kalein one more time. Just to make sure I did everything right. Because the mission was to give the king the pill, I believe. I promise. Okay, I made a promise to give the king a peaceful and ordinary life. Request that you, me, fulfill the remaining hat. First, you must use the soda fountain and straw to generate the restoration pills and tokens. Then give one of the pills to the king. With that, who loses memory will be able to live a normal human being life. The king trusts you enough to hand you the box. Surely you will consent to a request from you no questions asked. Oh, oh, okay, okay. So since I did it, I go back to Earth. But even when he... Didn't give... The king any pills, it was fine. I still went back to Earth. I, don't know. I think I'm gonna look up how to get the other ending. Because I feel like I've done everything I could. Enjoy the diner ending two. Okay, I can't find one. There's like no clear walk there. <laughs> so I gotta look through Reddit. I'm looking at 100% achievements. Oh, you can open the box blazing brute force apparently.
Okay, ending one is where you give creamer to Chenna's. Okay, okay. Okay. I might have cooked myself. <laughs> so there's a way to give Chalanaka the pill. And you have to give him the soup drink. while holding the soup I know I drink the soup I think I see something an elevator you what a relief You have arrived at the experimentation building. Oh, hey. Good work today. I heard everything. About number 23's infringement, I mean. That was rough. But we were able to deal with the witness without issue. So number 23 should be pardoned. That's good, at least. I knew you were probably the most relieved. Right, Executioner? You're right about that. I'm not sure I'll ever get used to sentencing my comrades. That trait of yours is exactly why you were picked. Yeah. I hope that the time to carry out an exile never comes, if possible. Well, that's right. I actually was looking for you. I thought I'd say goodbye. My vacation request was approved for a little over 300 years. Your colleagues will have it rough with the best moon technician gone for 300 years. Maybe. You're free to come visit me if you'd like. I think I'll spend the whole time at a place called Fork and Spoon. I'll stop by when I have time. Why'd you pick Fork and Spoon anyways? They have advanced printing technology and a lot of books. The country is a bit unstable due to strained rain... The country is a bit unstable due to strange relations with its neighbors and pestilence, though. A culture of self-indulgence has risen within some social classes as well. I see. Will you... Will you be alright in there? I'll be fine. Most likely. Well, have fun. But, promise me something. Don't get too attached to any humans. Is that your advice as executioner? Advice as your friend. It's hard to say goodbye forever. Even if there is an afterlife, our kind can never go there. <laughs> Thanks. By the way, when is this elevator going to make it to the next floor? Oh, sorry. I stopped it. I'll get it moving. You have arrived at the living quarters. Well, see you around. Goodbye. No. 
This all must be some sort of misunderstanding. Perhaps it is. But it's your role as executioner to verify that. This will be a difficult job for you, as I'm sure you're aware. Such a shame to lose a good technician. It, it can't be true. Number two, have a little more tact. I'm sorry, Executioner. I know you and number 68 were... Executioner, do you understand? You must carry out your duty. This is a job only you can do. That's right. You're the one and only Executioner. All 112 of us have chosen you for this role. You must devote yourself to your duty with compassion, sincerity, and fairness. It wasn't my choice to be Executioner. But, I understand. Well then, I would like to verify everything as Executioner. Number 68. Did you use lunar technology to let King R. Spike, a fork and spoon, escape from Gustin's pursuers? It is true. Of my own volition, no less. So it was wrong to save the king. I knew it. On top of that, four humans were injured during the escape, one of which was killed, correct? That's correct. I determined that there was no other option to protect the king. Oh, because she was on vacation, staying in the kingdom. She befriended the king, and he told her, no human friends. And then she broke the rules. She's evil. Even though you were in possession of disabling devices. That is correct. Why? They would have drawn too much attention. They also leave behind debris. If I were to use them, there's a good chance that the secrets of our lunar technology would be greatly revealed. That was... a prudent decision. It was. I carried out a series of plans with the utmost prudence. I'm not so sure about that. Going to such lengths for a single human is insane. You could have ended up in an irreversible mental state. You could have considered that possibility. Clonica, that's enough. There's no way to pardon my actions. Please just send me to exile. It wouldn't be any fault of yours. You need not be concerned for me. This is what I wanted. Oh, that's why in the cutscene, it's just Klein alone on the moon. Because she broke the rules when we gave the king the pill. I understand. Number 68, Klein, your sentence has been determined. You infringed upon all three violatable laws. You are to be banished for all of eternity on the moon of exile. Thank you. You are a fair and just executioner. This is the opening sequence. My friend, Obtain Chalonica is the executioner. Okay. Shalonika is the executioner. Uh, not yet. I don't want to do it. I'm scared. Okay. I did find it weird how everybody was, like, telling me their favorite drinks. Oh, I forgot what his favorite drink was. <laughs> I do remember, um... Glasspan's favorite drink is the juice. She likes alcohol. Black booze. I'll drink it in front of her. Something's happening. Oh, wait. Black booze gives me creamer. I forgot. Well, it did nothing. <laughs> What was the king's favorite drink? I forgot. I think it was the stew.
Yeah, I think he liked the soup. I think I see something. A door. Please, open up. Who is it? What brings you to the archives at this hour? Lord! Oh my. Oh wait, wrong voice. Oh my. King R. Spike. What may I do for you, your majesty? Is Renee the archivist present? Master Renee passed away seven years ago from the plague. I am Klein, the one currently managing this archive. Oh, is that so? Well then, I have something to request of you. I have grown tired from my mountain of work, so I have simply come to read. I understand. Certainly, your majesty. Also, I do not wish to make a big fuss, but could you not be so formal? I have no desire to be king here. I just want to be treated as another visitor. Of course, but please at least allow me to address you as my king. It feels rude otherwise. Thank you. Well, if I'm to treat you like anybody else, then I would be kicking you out at this hour. Oh. I'm only joking. Here, come this way. Oh, this place has changed a lot in ten years. Do you have any stories you'd recommend? It's been a while since I've read a book, so I'd prefer some light reading. If that's the case, how's this? It's about a land where the people turn to stand in old age. And that's... light reading? Wait, are they gonna hold hands? I've been curious. How do you get here? Certainly there are many guards patrolling the castle, aren't there? I escape from my bedroom window out into the courtyard. From there, I just walk along the roof. That's too dangerous. What if you fell? It's my only means of getting a little bit of freedom. What other choices do I have? Do be careful. So, do you enjoy P. Caroline's Earth and Dream? I did. Or rather, I did until the mud monster appeared. Really? But I thought that was the part that Arthur wished to depict. But I thought that was the part that the author wished to depict the most. Perhaps. But the monster was to blame for destroying the village people's way of life. I took pleasure in the depiction of their lives in the first half of the book. How idyllic it was. How about a more peaceful book next? And so, the lady having abandoned everything at long last, cast her silver sword into the fountain, and disappeared into the depths of the forest. Her once grand ambition realized only in part. I see. And what happened next? There isn't any more. That's the end of the legend. But why? What happened to the lady afterward? Um... Well, surely was she... Well, surely she was accepted into a village somewhere. And lived happily ever after, more or less. Stories have little business with those who are already fulfilled, you see. Their lives need no explanation. That's why this story doesn't see what happens next. Is that so? It is. Okay, I think I switched the voices there. <laughs> By the way. Oh yeah, I think I switched the voices. <laughs> There's no indicator. I don't know who's who. Have you heard of the news of the Gust Invasion? Of course. I'm gonna be tied up for quite a while. This may be our last time together. Thank you, Klein. Oh wait, I did have the voices right earlier. Okay. Every day since I met you has been a joy. My king. Why don't you run away? No, I can never do that. I may not have become king of my own volition, but I am king regardless. 
It is my duty to protect my people. But with things as they are, your death in this war is inevitable. Perhaps it is. My king, do you remember the promise we made to each other? Of course. But now all of that is a childish fantasy. The future of my country and people is at stake. I have never once broken a promise. And this will be the first time I do. Forgive me. Where am I? I can't move. You. That's you, Klein, isn't it? It is. How did you know? How could I not? What has happened to Fork and Spoon? Fork and Spoon will perish. The head of a single puppet ruler will not change its fate. It is a formidable task. But I have a duty as a king. Won't you release me? You did not become king of your own volition, did you? I did not. But to my people, I am their king. Klein, please. I beg of you. Forgive me, my king. I choose not your will, but the promise we made to each other. I'm letting you escape. At your chest, I have placed a box. Give it to someone you grow to trust. What will happen to you? I will pay the price for my actions. Fine. Wait. Ah, uh, Lottery. Where did you go? Oh, why can't I die? Miss Glassplane, please calm down. Oh. Where am I? Obtained your relation to Klein. Okay. Interesting. Okay, I need to figure out which drink. Glass pan light. She liked the alcohol, but... Maybe because she has it already? Glass syrup, silver water. Okay, silver water gave me a pill. Black boost gave me... Creamer. Maybe she likes the glass syrup? Pretty good. Silver water was the pill. Soup was the king. Moon tears is teleportation. Apple juice? No way she said apple juice. So delicious. Nothing happened. Okay. I, I think she said that black booze was her favorite. But I tried that already. Maybe? Okay, I don't remember what it was to unlock glass pan. I don't think there is anything. Okay, I'm gonna question the king. And then when you asked, uh... I forgot her name. When you asked Chenis what her favorite drink is, it's coffee. So I don't think drinking anything in front of her will do anything. I kind of want to talk to the king first. But you know what else I want to do first is run an ad. Because, guys, we're four, four hours in stream. This went longer than I thought. Oopsie. But I want to try and get as many secrets as I can. Because it seems like there's a good chunk of lore that I missed if I just ended like an hour ago. So, 
an ad is coming. If you want to avoid that ad, all you must do is subscribe for four ninety nine, just five dollars. Skip your coffee and get ad free viewing all month long. Or you can link your Amazon Prime YouTube channel hashtag self review with Prime. Click subscribe. Do it now. Also, I'm doing a sub only stream tomorrow, so if you don't want to miss tomorrow's stream, subscribe today. Back to it. What's your relation to Klein? Uh, don't do it yet. I'm gonna save. I should save so I don't have to do all that again. <laughs> Confront the king about his relationship with Klein. There may be no going back once done. Do it! So, the box you gave me belonged to Klein, right? Inside there was a straw that let me see your past. Klein was a very important person to you, wasn't she? That's correct. And Klein is still trying to fulfill her promise to you. But... How? If you take the pill, you'll lose your memory and be able to live as a normal person. Then you'll be returned to Earth. I see. And what happened to Klein? I can't say for sure, but... She's probably in exile. So that's it. She kept her promise this whole time. But I lived more than enough years but I've lived more than enough years here as it is, though this may not be what she had wanted. I worry for Klein, however. Thank you for telling me. I'm grateful to hear that. In exile I see. Hmm. Okay, let's talk to Chilonica. Should I confront Chalonica about the truth? Yes. I saw your past. You're the moon executioner, but now you've lost your memory. Is that true? I think so. To be honest with you, I have no idea if you're right. I know nothing about it. But I have no proof to the contrary if you claim I have no memory of it. The more I talk, the more suspicious I sound, huh? As if I'm feigning ignorance. Do you have any sort of proof? Any way for me to know for sure? Well, if you take this little pill... Wait, this didn't show up before. Before he was like, no. I do not want it. Give Chilonica the pill. There may be no going back once done. Do it. I am sure if you take this, your memories will come back. So that's what it is. But you couldn't live with yourself having sent Klein, your friend, into exile. That's why you erased your memory yourself. Even now the truth might be too much for you to handle. Hmm. I guess I'll try it. I have nothing to lose if you're lying to me. If you're telling the truth, then it's best I know. No matter the consequences. Oh, he took it. Well, I remember everything. Everything? Like, everything? Everything? Everything. Does that make you Chilonica the Executioner now? You don't have to treat me like a strain- You don't have to treat me like I'm a stranger or anything. I still have my memories leading up to this moment. Oh, I see. Well, how are you feeling? Well, though I have a heavy heart, I don't think I'll break down into an irreversible mental state or anything. Perhaps my memory of being human serves as sort of a buffer. So what happens now? If you had the straw that Klein created, you all could leave Moon Palace. That's what she told me too. You met Klein? More like Klein's data? We talked for a bit. I see. So you spoke of you and everyone here returning. Before you go, though, I have a favor I'd like to ask of you. Of course, it would be with the premise that you return eventually.
What's the irreversible mental state? It's something that can happen to us, similar to how humans die. It's hard to explain because it varies from person to person. For example, when an ice sculpture melts, it turns into water. Even though water is the same as ice in terms of its composition, it's impossible to reconstruct the sculpture. It's impossible to reconstruct the. It's impossible to reconstruct the sculpture with just the information in the water, right? This sort of irreversibility is the same within our minds. The mind becomes muddy and dissolves. If we use the metaphor of the ice sculpture, it seems possible to turn water back into ice, even if we give up on reproducing its exact form. However, such a method has never been discovered. That's what an irreversible mental state is. What favor? I would like to fulfill my duty as executioner, and my duty to you and Klein as your friend. Your duty as executioner? Oh, yeah. When I say executioner, it does not mean what it means on Earth. Basically, I want the current situation to be resolved in a way that satisfies everyone as most as possible. To do that, I will need your trust and that straw. Have a peek at the past of the other three using that straw just as you did with me. The past glint through that straw is the memory that forms the core of that person. And if there is something that they're hiding, please confront them and have them acknowledge the truth. Is it really okay for me to do that? It's like slipping into their soul's most delicate parts. You've already seen my past, haven't you? You've even confronted me about it. You'll be doing the same thing. I suppose you're right. So what next? Share the information with everyone. I'll handle things after that. Let me know when you're finished with everyone. Okay, so I got a drink in front of everybody. Um. And do I drink in front of... Yeah, silver water's pill. Black booze creamer. Maybe I drink Moon Tears again? Okay, there's no new dialogue there. I wish you could interview them again what their favorite drinks are. Is there any creamer? Is there any cake? Last pan. I wish I could go back. I don't know. I'm just going to talk to Gladonica. I'm finished. You're not finished yet. Oh!
Okay, I'm gonna drink one of every drink in front of the other two people. Pretty good. Dang it! Yeah, silver water just gives me pills. I'm gonna try soup. Wait, is it soup in front of everyone? Ain't no way. Okay, it said, I think I see something. An apparatus of sorts. It is soup in front of everyone. Okay, okay. Got it. Okay, coordinates look good. Safety is on. The code is correct. Everything is in order. G granting approval. Phew, I'm exhausted. Welcome back, number 46. Thanks. Oh. Chenna's, are you the next one up? Um, yeah. I thought I should try something more challenging. How brave of you. Well, I'm pretty sure the next shift is doing maintenance. Normally, rookies aren't assigned those shifts. Number 7 said I should be fine as long as I stick to the manual. Oh, that's why I've... That's why she was there forever. <laughs> well, usually. But number seven's also a bit of an optimist. I'll be doing two shifts back to back, but how about I cover for you? No, I, I couldn't ask you to do that. You don't need to worry about being indebted to me or anything. It's my responsibility as your senior. To tell the truth, I'd be worried about you. You're aware that Klein was exiled, aren't you? I am. After that, the executioner number 67 also went missing. The standard for number 67 has been decided for the time being, but they're likely not as merciful or fair as number 67 was. If you ever to make an, if you were ever to make an infringement, you might not stand a chance. That's, that's terrifying. I'm worried about the old executioner too. Exactly. So I'll be the one to go next. Sorry, but please let me go. I... I want to change. I've been such a burden to everyone else. I don't want to be stuck being incapable of pulling my weight. I'm sorry. I wasn't taking your feelings into account. All right then, Chenas. I leave it in your hands. Thank you. But if anything were to happen, let me be the one to take responsibility for you. No ifs, ands, or buts. Number seven will also be to blame. I understand. I'll be rooting for you. Okay. First, I need to check to make sure no one is here. Alright. Tokens. Yep, there's plenty. Everything looks good. The check is complete. Down, down as she descended, as if tumbling toward the bottom of the stairwell. Yet the monster had already vanished. The bell installed at the entrance, ringing out shrilly. Could it still be nearby? She audibly clutched her shotgun. This isn't how I thought it'd be. I thought it was a more peaceful story, but it's taking a... I thought it was a more peaceful story, but it's taken a disturbing turn. Maybe I'll read something else. I need to reform again. I feel like I could disintegrate soon. After that, I think I'll use some tokens to fast forward time. Huh? It's locked. Hello? Is anyone in there? Uh, yes, I'm Chenis. Oh, thank God. 
I suddenly found myself in this place and I thought it was all alone. My name's Glasspan. What is this place? Do you work here or something? Uh, Chenis, was it? Can you hear me? Uh, I, um, the same exact thing happened to me. Yeah, I looked around and found myself here. I'm in the same situation as you. And I'm so afraid of the outside that I can't bring myself to leave this room. Really? Man, this place makes no sense. I know. What should I do? That's a human, I'm sure of it. At the very least, I need to reform myself, or else I'll lose my human appearance. And at this rate... Huh. No. Oh, she's goop. I have disintegrated. There's no way for me to leave this room now. Chenis? The creamer is the only thing that's not getting replenished. You don't have any in there, do you? Oh, cause she kept on drinking coffee and using the creamer so she can't go back, dude. Glass pan, stupid. Huh, you must be Chenis. Glass pan has informed me of the situation. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Um, excuse me? Oh wait, wrong voice. Nice to meet you, my name is Jelanica. By the way, I have a few questions about Moon Palace for you. It won't open. Oh, wait, that's my voice. It won't open. Is it locked from the inside? The situation's just getting worse. So many humans! I've got to find a way out of all this. Chenis is the caretaker. I saw your past. Maybe it's a problem for us humans to know the truth, but... You're the caretaker here at Moon Palace. If it was not obvious. What you're afraid of is actually number 46 being held responsible for your own mistakes, isn't it? You know that much, huh? I guess there's no need to hide things any longer, then. I had my suspicions about you, but... I don't think you had any malicious intent or anything. I'm sorry you've all gotten wrapped up in this. But number 46 treated me with such kindness. I can't let her go into exile like this. To be honest, I'm not even sure what crimes I've committed at this point. What can I do to save her? I don't know, but... I'm hoping everything ends well. Me too. Thank you. Okay, that was anticlimactic. I already knew she was the caretaker. Like, it was obvious. Uh... Finally, glass pan. I think I see something. Someone's watching glass pan. Hey, glass pan? What? It's hard to get to the soda mach it's hard to get to the soda fountain with you in the way like that. Oh yeah? Who cares? Glass pan. Are you not content with being here? Of course I'm not. Nothing ever happens here. Even if we have all the time in the world, what's the point if we're just standing around? Oh yeah? But the moon is as full as it'll ever be. And there's even a soda fountain. And conveniently, you're here. What more could we want? Lottery. Am I just a convenience to you? <laughs> what's the matter? I'm bored and depressed. That's what's the matter. Chenix, won't you just come out already? Huh? No, I won't. Same old, same old. I see. The true issue we face is that everything is so damn boring. Or so the saying goes. 
And what wise old sage came up with that quote? I just thought of it now. Doesn't it seem like some scholar or philosopher would say something like that? <laughs> You're too carefree about things, Lottery. But that's just what you're lacking. Not taking everything so seriously is the way to go. This might be a bit of a shock, but there is no meaning in the negative emotions that you cling to, like boredom and depression. In this eternal world, there's nothing to worry about. Right, Glasspan? You're so naive and melancholic. That's a nice speech. You should run for president. Yeah, that's the spirit. Loosen up a bit. I wonder how long we've been here. 80,000 years, give or take? That many? How'd you figure that out? A wild guess. Well, that's unreliable. Thanks to you, though, at least I know how to kill time here now. Just having stupid conversations and getting lost in the drinks? Now you're getting it. Of course you'd say that. Thanks, Lattery. I'm glad I'm with you. Uh, we're gonna be together forever and you're gonna st say- We're going to be together forever and you're gonna say stappy stuff like that? Should I not? No, it's fine. You really know how to catch me off guard. <laughs> Lattery doesn't exist. That's what it said in the credits. Okay, the credits kind of spoil all the little side secret stories. Lottery doesn't exist. What's gotten into you all of a sudden? I saw your past. I saw you talking to Lottery and she wasn't there. I don't... I didn't know if you realized that, that... I didn't know you... I didn't know if you realized that or not. I've thought about that possibility many times since her disappearance. That there never was a lottery in the first place. But I eventually concluded that whether she was real or not, did it change the fact that I'd never see her again? So I stopped thinking about it. You tried to tell me not to get hung up on someone who never existed. As if, as if I can move on so easily, aren't you? I don't know. I just thought you should know. I see. Then... Thanks for the dose of reality, I guess. Really. I'm not angry or anything. It's just... Everything has become meaningless at this point. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, I've confronted everyone. I'm finished. You're finished with everyone. I'd like to gather everyone for a discussion. Are you ready? Once that's done, you should be able to return home from Moon Palace. I'm ready! Alright. Let's call everyone over. What is Chilonica planning? Huh? You've been called over here, too? Has everyone been called here? What's going on, Chilonica? You seem different. Is this some sort of meeting? Oh, wait, wrong voice. <laughs> Is this some sort of meeting? Oh, you're here, too, Spike. What's going to happen? All right, everyone's all here. Let's get started. I figured we ought to have a good view of the moon while we're at it. Whoa. Where are we? Is this your doing, Chilonica? I adjusted the translucency of the walls. How do you know how to do that? I remembered. Along with other things. Well, I'm sure you all have lots of questions, but let's get straight to the main subject. Have you noticed the straw that Loris has been carrying around? Lars? 
Huh? Lars? Who's Lars? That'd be me. What? That's the first time I've heard it. Oh my gosh. Hey now. Back on topic. With that straw, we're able to generate objects called tokens. We can use these tokens to return everyone to their former world. What? That would solve everything! No, not everything. What do you mean? I've called you all here to discuss the issues that can't be resolved with the tokens alone. And in order to do that, I need you all to share the information that you have. This is how we'll identify what issues need resolving. Well then, let's get started. So in other words, Chalonica and Chenis are not human. That's right. We are a race of immortal beings that migrated to live on the moon. There are only 113 of us. And your lover Klein is one of us. You needn't say that word out loud. So, you're not denying it either, huh? And what's wrong with that glass pen? Well, sorry, sheesh. Um, Chilonica. What is it? Do you really think that it's okay to tell humans all this? How would the executioner judge? I am the executioner. Full? <laughs> so, Lattery never existed? Janice, you were here when Glasspen arrived. How did you not know? Because she never left her room, that's why. So Klein is still in exile for the crime of letting the king free? And she'll be exiled for the rest of eternity. Glad I'm not her. Do show a tad more sympathy. Well, it's not my problem. For the sound of things, though... For the sound of things, though, Klein is guilty of killing someone and isn't exactly innocent here. Be that as it may, exile is a punishment more severe than death, is it not? Klein's crimes were brave and extended beyond her own kind. As human technology advances, our kind's existence will inevitably become public knowledge. It is possible that the knowledge of her crimes would prove problematic. It would differ from, it would differ from other massacres in history, in that the perpetrator is still alive. Incidentally, the moon of exile is the one you see now. So that is- oh, wrong voice. So that is where Klein is. I see now. Everyone else has their own baggage, too. But wait, what about you? Me? Ah, uh, yes, we forgot about you. Let's look at your past. All I have to do is use that straw thingy, right? There's really nothing to see. You're right. It would only be fair if we took a look into your past as well. I'll be taking the straw. Sorry if this is unpleasant for you. I don't mind. How human of you to be so considerate, though. I've lived as a human too, you know. How was it? Nothing worth taking note of, really. You just street you just seem stressed over the fact that you had an exam immediately afterward if you were to return. You wish you brought more study materials with you. And that's about it. Actually, your story might be the saddest. Uh, how rude. I'm just trying to live my life over here. Exams are rough, you know. What exam is it anyway? The Class 1 General Radio Communication Operator Licensing Exam. Oh, a license? I thought it'd be a college final or something. Isn't that exam super hard to pass? Are you planning on making a career with it? No, just a hobby. Sheesh. Well then... We've heard everyone's story. What do we do now? I want to go home already. The two of you should be all clear to return to Earth. By the way, Glasspan, I'm able to erase your memories of Lattery. Would you like me to do that for you? What? You can do that? I can. Manipulating human memories is not that difficult a task. No, I think I'll pass. Your choice. It's for you, Chenis. Yes? You're worried about how this incident will be dealt with according to the laws of the moon, aren't you? I am. Let me handle all the procedures. Given the circumstances, you likely won't be charged with any crimes. Neither should number 46. 
I know you're worried about exile being a possibility, but the laws of the moon are more lenient than you might think. That's a relief. Last but not least, King Spike. Yes? To be honest, I'm at a loss of how to handle your case. Do you want to return to Earth with it in its current time period? No. I no longer have any attachments to Earth, nor do I know anyone there now. I'm just worried about Klein. I thought you'd say that. Poor thing. You know, Chilonica. Yes? I do have one proposal. Though I am not certain if it is possible. What would that be? Lars? Glasspan? I'm teleporting you both back to Earth now. Normally humans that visit Moon Palace have their memory erased before being sent back. But this time, we'll make an exception. But why? For personal reasons. Huh? But what if we tell other humans about your kind? If there are two of us with the same story, then we're sure to have more credibility. I doubt that. There are countless pairs on Earth who share a common fantasy. Hmm. Well, we'll commence the teleportation. Goodbye. Chenos, give me a hand. Uh, yes, sir. Well then, goodbye, you two. Yeah. See ya. Bye. It'd be nice to meet you again someday. It would. Excuse me? Huh? Um, are you alright? Yes, I'm fine. I'm back. I'd better get going. My exam is soon. Okay, teleportation permitted. Oh, that's us being teleported back in now. Good work out there, Chenis. You've been busy, haven't you? The executioner has returned too. Yes, it was tough. But Chilonica says I won't be charged. That's great. You did good, Chenis. Thanks. And number 46? Thanks for everything. Um. What for, exactly? For treating me with respect. What? Why would I not? But you're welcome anyways. God damn. There's just no end to this. Lottery. Oh great, I'm talking to myself again. It's like a charm or something. When I say that out loud, it feels sort of comforting, but also a bit lonely. Is that a good thing? Hey, Glasspan. You've been rambling to yourself for a while now. Uh, th did I say that out loud? Yeah. Sorry, I, I didn't even notice. So the three individuals have been dealt with and returned, and number 22, Chenis, has been pardoned. I see. That's a relief. And number 67, we commend you for returning. Welcome back, Chilonica. Do you intend to continue as executioner? You can no longer erase your memory. If you continue, you might enter an irreversible mental state. Nobody will blame you if you step down. No, I'm not stepping down. If that is what you wish, we won't stop you. It's up to you. One more thing. I have a proposal regarding the moon's laws and punishments. Would it be for Klein's sake? It may be mixing business with personal affairs. I haven't said anything about it yet. We will allow it. 
You'd find it too difficult to continue as executioner without ideals or aspirations. Good luck, number 67. May you show your intent and be triumphant. Cute. Klein and Spike are together in exile? So that, everybody, is the true ending. You know, I have to be guided a little bit, but I figured that out in the end. The three moon sages fish. <laughs> there we go. Thank you for waiting. Here are your strawberry pancakes. Thank you. We're at an actual diner now. It's smaller than I thought it'd be. Oh well. I guess I'll go ahead and eat. Ah, sorry for making you wait. I got caught up in work. It's no problem. I actually already ate. Good. Now, what should I get? Oh. Okay. Excuse me. Yes, have you decided on your order? I'll have a drink from the soda fountain. And I'll have a salad and a large curry, please. All right, then. Is there shrimp in the curry or salad? There isn't. Good. That'll be it, then. All right. Got it. That's a lot of food. I just get so hungry when I work. Are you allergic to shrimp too? Too? Are you also allergic? What's up with that? Does it have anything to do with Moon Palace? Who knows? So, how did your exam go? I failed. No! Oh no. Well, you did take a ridiculously long break from studying. <laughs> Speaking of which, I've already experienced all that time living, but every day seems so much longer since I've gotten back. I feel the same. Well, it's good things worked out, though my long work hours are a pain in the neck. Yeah, I know. I wonder if the king was really happy with that decision. Beats me. Only those- Beats me. Only those two would know. I guess they wouldn't have I guess there wouldn't have been much for him to live for during this time period anyway. Wouldn't you say so yourself? You know what life is like nowadays. <laughs> I guess. But they're bound to run out of topics to talk about someday. Obviously. But it probably beats being in solitude forever. What if they get tired of each other? If that happens, then one of them could just go and sit on the opposite side of the moon. Then that'd make two of them in solitude. <laughs> I wonder if Chenis and Chilonica are doing well. I hope so. Yeah. That's all I can ask for. I hope they're well. Hey. Are you still hung up on lottery? Hmm. I'm not even sure myself. Even now I still get lonely when I remember her. But ever since I returned and confirmed that no one But ever since I returned and confirmed that no one knew who she was, things have been a little easier. I see. Plus, even without lottery in my life, I've still made a new friend. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe I need to shout all of a sudden. Oh, sorry, I was just so happy. You dork. Sorry for the wait. Here's your salad and curry. Thank you. The end. Well then, don't mind if I do. So delicious. 
I'm glad to hear it. The end. Ooh, new menu options. Sound gallery and illustration gallery. Let's look at the illustrations. Oh, it's like lore. Okay, I'm not going to read all this. Screenshot if you want. Wow. Wait! Lil Reese? Oh wait, Lars is me. Oh, there's so much. Okay, so I might screenshot and look, read this all later. And then sound gallery. All the different sound, all the different songs from the game. This is really cute. Everybody? That was Enjoy the Diner. Took me four and a half hours. Oopsie. <laughs> I think it was still enjoyable. I like how a lot of things weren't super straightforward. The dialogue mechanic did get kind of exhausting having to go back and forth. But it definitely seems like there was a lot going on behind the scenes. I personally love sci-fi. I would have to say... It seems kind of a lot for like a eleven dollar game. I'll be honest. It, it it's more a quick adventure, so it's not very much like a game. To me, this is more like kind of like visual novel, but without the visuals, it was just a novel. <laughs> um, what did I say? I would say seven out of ten. Like it was still like enticing to figure out what was going on, but not like a game. I guess. I do like how I. I do appreciate how I was able to go back and get the true ending. And I definitely feel like if you did not go for the true ending, you would have like a lot would have gone over your head, right? But yeah, that was Enjoy the Diner, everybody. Thank you for watching. Okay, guys, I have to go. I was supposed to go to the store today. <laughs> so let's wrap up stream here for today. If anybody wants to do calligraphy, you can use your channel points. Getting music on. Let's do Wii Fit music. Do we have any redeemers? Anybody want their name written in calligraphy? You guys have one minute. I'm gonna put my hair up. I have my scrunchie on standby. These scrunchies are so good. Okay. Let's wrap it up here for today. Thank you guys for watching. Any chatters, lurkers? I said short stream, and it's almost five hours. Okay, doubling the playtime is kind of silly. But I, I did read out all the dialogue out loud. That does add some playtime, I guess. So, plan is simple. It is Thursday. Tomorrow, weekly subscriber-only stream. Friday. I don't know what time yet. 
but it will be playing with viewers so you know what i'll do it in the afternoon so maybe maybe like 3 p.m my time why am i so pink you anyway so subscriber only stream tomorrow in the afternoon slash evening mario kart because on sunday it is mario 10 day so I need to practice for that. <laughs> and I will do that on stream on Sunday. I don't know what time. Because I might hang out with a friend this weekend. I'm not sure. So that is TBD. But for sure, you guys will see me tomorrow. If you guys want something else to watch. Check out my most recent YouTube video. It is the ramen mukbang stream that we did a year ago. So click the like. Go watch it right now. And if you want to stay up to date with me, you can follow me on social media. I have a Twitter, Instagram, and a TikTok. Go follow them, too. That way you can get daily clips from streaming. Isn't that pretty cool? Okay. Thank you for watching. I will see you all when I see you. <laughs> Subscribers, I will see you tomorrow. Non-subs, uh, maybe Saturday or Sunday. Okay, goodbye. Bye-bye. Dude, I did not think this game would take me five freaking hours. You know what? I did it. Okay, outro music. One minute. Any final words? Hey guys, enjoy the rest of your day. Have a good night. I'll see y'all later. Bye-bye.